is so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Charlamagne Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is sponsored by the national best-selling book, Shook One, hey. Anxiety Playing Tricks on Me, uh, available everywhere you want to buy books right now, Okay. You got any church announcements, Schultz? Uh, I got some shows coming up, man. They, uh, what are we, thanks, yeah, but no, Valentine's Day, we're going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, Raleigh Improv. Uh, then All-Star Weekend, Charlotte, Saturday, the Comedy Zone. Then uh, the 22nd, 23rd of February, San Diego, American Comedy Co. And then the 28th, L.A., LA, the first show sold out. I think the second show, we got like less than 50 tickets left. So get on that real quick. Uh, and then March 3rd, we start the release of my new special, Views from the Six. Hey. Every Sunday in March, we're going to have a new clip pop up. Um, I'm so excited for it, man. So every Sunday, we're going to have a new clip pop up. Then we also got a tour documentary for that European tour uh, that's going to be part of the Dropping In series that I do also on YouTube.com slash Andrew Schultz. So a lot of sexy content coming to you. Uh, in March, I can't wait for y'all to see it, man. I'm so fucking excited. I'll be in Charlotte Saturday too, just for the day, though. Really? Yeah, I'm doing something with uh Mountain Dew, right, Paige? Oh, cool. I'm doing something with Mountain Dew. Well, come by. What is it? Um, it's like some type of activation. I mean, I don't, they got me interviewing like a bunch of basketball players, and I think I got to introduce the Migos or something like that. Sick. Yeah. That's Saturday. All right, Saturday cool. Saturday during the day. So I'll be in Charlotte. Well, Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Well, today is Valentine's Day. This will be released on Valentine's Day. That's right. Do and you have a Valentine's show, T? I don't, man. I kind of, I don't, I don't. I think I might focus on the single men this year. I've been giving the single ladies hell mm -hmm. every Valentine's for the past Give us some hell. 40 years. Give us some hell. I think I might give hell. the single men some hell on Talk Valentine's this week. How does, because I'm going to say, how do single men feel on Valentine's Day? Does it. <sighs> Do you give a fuck? No, but maybe I will. I don't know. I gave a fuck being alone uh, for breakfast on Christmas this year. That really affected me. I was in a hotel by myself. <laughs> 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 Son, that's just so mad. Yo, you want to know some real You know, Duval told me he had a child because of that. Because, you know, being on the road and seeing so how lonely, lonely comedians man. be. Yeah. Duh. Fuck. I was eating breakfast at... um. At, uh, at at this the Freehand Hotel on 23rd because everything else was closed. I was looking for places. First mm -hmm. of all, I'm lonely on breakfast. I go to my regular spot, close. Go to my other spot, close. It's Christmas. Ain't it's shit open. Ain't shit open. The Why? Fuck you. Because people are with people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> looking at you like, who the fuck Not is this lunatic? Exactly. That fucker, come shoot our shit up. Yo, so I, <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck are you here? <laughs> so, so I go into this hotel. I'm like, hotel's got to be open. I go and I. they're like, uh, how many people? I'm like, one. Jesus. Jesus uh, Christ. I go to the bar. I sit at the bar. And I just started telling people I'm Jewish I, because I didn't want them to to think that I was like alone on yeah, fucking yeah, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. sad thing is my family lives like 15 blocks from me. You just didn't feel like being bothered? Well, I was going to be with them that night for dinner. Got you, got you, got and you. And I should have just went and just said hello for them for breakfast. But I totally made me empathize with people who uh, just are alone on the holidays, man. First of all, Fuck. there's nothing more amazing than Christmas Day when you're a father. Really? What? I'm talking about a father who actually, you know, is with his wife and lives at home yeah. with the kids. I don't know how the fuck wax feels, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but but I'm talking about somebody who's actually in the house with their children. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. there's nothing better. Because you get up early, you know what I'm saying? The kids are super excited. Yeah. You kind of half sleepy. You're just laying on the couch, just watching them open up their toys. And, like, yeah. you realize that's what it's all about. Like, yeah. that's what it's for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did but, they come, like, wake you up super early? Of course. Yeah. Of course. And is it annoying or are you like, all right, this is dope, let's do it? Nah, you just know you ain't got no choice. And you usually go to bed late the night before because you're you all putting shit together and out, wrapping yeah. late last minute shit. Yeah. But you know, six o'clock, seven o'clock, they're going to be up and you just got to go up, be up with them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you really don't, at least for me, I don't even really get the experience, the joy of it because I'm on the couch half sleep. But it's an exhilarating feeling. It feels great. Yeah. Like I couldn't imagine... You know, being lonely anywhere on Christmas Day. Well, I can. <laughs> <laughs> What's lonelier? Being alone on Christmas Day or being alone on Valentine's? I don't really care much about the Valentine's thing, I'll be honest with you. And I, and I got this show, so I'm sure people are going to come out. So None I'm gonna of the girls you fucking expecting anything? You know, there was one, and then we kind of stopped talking, man. I, I'm in right on time. Right show on time, Hit baby. him with the heavy right yeah. before Valentine's. Hey. <laughs> hey. I, mean, I just saw Jay Williams outside. Did you interview him? Yeah, yeah, for the yeah, 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 yeah. I tried to get him on a gram because I wanted to while he was getting interviewed by like, TMZ. <laughs> I was like, they talk about his ankles. 
<laughs> but he ran away real quick. You got a new show on uh, ESPN Plus. Yeah, called The Boardroom. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spelled B O R E D. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, no, that's a great joke. I bro. like watching Jay on the college shit. Have though. you not heard that joke? No. That was on a uh, was it a Conan interview with uh, Carrot Top and uh-huh. uh, what's that guy? Norm McDonald. And Norm McDonald and, and uh, Conan were there and Carrot Top yeah, was, that's was there. That's a YouTube video I'll click on so, fast. No, this shit was so funny. <laughs> Dude, Norm is just fucking roasting him. And Carrot Top's like, well, I'm here to promote my new movie. He's like, what's the name of the movie? He's uh, uh, Chairman of the Board. And then he goes, is it spelled B-O-R-E-D? And the fucking room goes crazy, Jesus dude. Christ. <laughs> yeah. Carrot Top, don't, Carrot Top, like, he can fuck somebody up nowadays. Yo, he's swole. Yeah. Swole. Got mad gadgets, probably. Yeah, but salute to everybody out there spending <laughs> Valentine's Day alone. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody should find some sort of love. You know, the best part about Valentine's Day. How do you do Day, it? Can we just talk mean? about that? Finding love? Yeah, man. How the fuck do you you find somebody and then you just get along with them? This is crazy because I've been with my woman. It'll be 21 years this year. Yeah, but you've been cheating. I'm talking about people who I mean. really know how to but, get along. But that's what I mean. Like, I'm talking about people who fuck other people. Now you don't. But no, like no. for years you did. I could do that. But that's my point. <laughs> Motherfuckers give you a relationship but, 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 about, for 18 years you fucking other girls. You single. But that's my point. Yeah. I'm in love with my wife. I would be in love with a girl. Let me fuck other girls too. And other girls was in love with me. (laughs) So you had. So I'm like, you telling me how to find love? I found plenty of it. I couldn't keep a lot of it, (laughs) but 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 I plan. I found plenty of it. There's plenty of girls that are like, I love you. I love you. But they know it can never go anywhere. So I'm like, damn, is that hard to find love? (laughs) I'll be having to throw my shit back in the ocean. I can't keep you. Good catch, but I can't. I can't. I can't keep you, boo. No, right. the love I can find, it's just like, it's getting people to, it's getting, it's it's not even getting them, it's like getting me to be wanting to uh, commit to that. Yeah, you are older, bro. It's different when you're young. When you're young, you have nothing to do but commit. Because mm. think about it, you don't have responsibilities when you're young. Mm. It's just you and your bae, you know what I mean? Mm. Y'all can just live life like it's golden. When you get older, you got a million other priorities. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like somebody, we, we was having a discussion yeah. on the Breakfast Club about sex being a priority, and I was like, "I mean, sex may be a priority, but where does it fall on the priority list?" Right? You know what I'm saying? You might right. have ten priorities. Sex might be number ten when yeah, you, you really need a house are an adult. to have sex in. You need electricity That's what and I'm water. Saying. You can take care of your kid. Like it's, yeah, it's other priority. You got a career. Like yeah, sex is a priority, but where does it fall? Can you manifest love? Like, can you not love someone and then like? force yourself into loving them? I don't think no, so. No, right? It has to be something that happens organic and naturally. Yeah, I don't think so. You, Alex says yes. Yeah. This guy's just contrarian right here, bro. He, that anything... No, there's no, there's no, that's not love. How do you manifest it? Like, I think, I think women can... I think women, you can start not liking somebody and then eventually, like, grow a love around them like a, like, like a moss. I don't know if we can do that. I can't. I can't go from not liking you. Well, no. Okay. Just think about it, right? Like, I think about, you know, even me and my wife are just, you know, you know, you know, guys that have been trying to highlight girls for a long time. The girls don't give them no play, no rhythm. But then eventually when they finally do connect, they end up being in love and having kids and getting married. So I think it can go from a point where a woman don't give a damn about you to really, really growing to love you. That's what I said. And same thing with a guy. I don't know if it can happen the other way. I don't know any guy who's like, I don't like this girl. I don't think she's hot. I don't know whatever. I had another girlfriend when I first started being with my wife. My wife was my side (laughs) chick. Okay. But you... She was <laughs> when I first started. When I first started dating my wife, but that's like, every dude. Every dude, like if you're if you're dating. I think Patrice even said this really well. But he's like Patrice. It's like if ladies, if you're dating a guy with value, he's dating other girls. Like stop. There's no way yeah, in yeah, hell. Yeah. Like if if you like him, you don't think other girls like him. Listen, ninety six, ninety seven. I had a whole other girlfriend that you couldn't tell me I wasn't going to end up marrying. marrying. And then you know I started. Sleeping around my wife. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> she was my side chick at the time, and yeah. I ended up with her. Weren't you with your wife for a year before you guys had sex? Yeah. That's a long side chick. You gotta do what you gotta do, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I didn't have any other priorities. <laughs> what the fuck? I had nothing else to do with shows. What else was I what else would I what else was I doing in ninety seven? 
Other than fucking getting in trouble, selling do- dope and shit, going to night school. I had no other priorities. Think about how good a drug deal you could have been if you actually put your mind to it, bro. You out here with multiple side chicks, getting arrested. I never wanted to commit to that game like that. Because I know that, that that's a game that you commit to. Like, we're talking about being in relationships, right? Yeah. You commit to somebody, there's a there's a return for that, right? Yes. There's a return on that investment. Yes. There's only two return on investments for the dope game when you commit to it. Jail or money? Jail or dead. Or dead. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah. make some money for a limited amount of time. Mm-hmm. But eventually, you're going to jail. You're going to jail. That's <laughs> and the fair. bigger the drug dealer you are, like, the more investments you make, <laughs> yeah. the more time you're going to get. That's the return on investment. Right. Like, think about all these guys. You was just talking about Freeway Ricky Ross. How much yeah. time did he do? 20 or something it's like not, that. It's not a dollar he made that was worth that 20 years Facts. in prison. Facts. Big Meech and Jeff with 30 plus years right now. These were the biggest drug dealers. El yeah. Chapo just got sentenced. They gonna get, they said he looked surprised in jail. Really, El Chapo? <laughs> it was like he looked surprised when he got found guilty. Really? <laughs> he probably gonna get like 500 years or something stupid. Wow. No, it's not worth it. But that's the only return on investment it is for the drug game. So it's pointless to commit. Yeah, but you can get used to jail, right? There are people who have accept jail and they end up finding ways to, maybe they're not happy, but they're not miserable. Bill Cosby says it's amazing. Is that right? That's what he just said. He released a statement to his lawyer. He said it's the most amazing experience. Being Bill in jail. Bill Cosby's also 976 years old. So he Facts. probably has no idea he's in jail. That's right. He probably yeah, thinks yeah. he's on the set of some movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shawshank Redemption. Exactly. He has no yeah. idea. And he probably was being sarcastic when he was on the phone. He told his lawyer, because when you get, when you get old, you lose all sarcasm in your voice. Yeah. So everything sounds serious. So you're like, how's prison? And it's also a statement. Amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. motherfucker probably being sarcastic as shit. Like, yeah. oh, he's doing great. He said it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, Wonderful yeah. experience. I and just, he's a comedian, you know Exactly, what I mean? yeah. This is, he's just, you know, throwing out some bars. He got new material. I just feel like if you can get used to jail, you should be able to get used to a person. You might have to get used to a person in jail, depending on how much time you got. Well, shit, if you can go gay... You got no choice. How spoiled am I? <laughs> I can't keep a girlfriend in the free world. There are dudes out there that don't even like dick, but they're like, I guess I like Bob. Bro, you're here for the next 50 years. Make yourself at home. All right. Or make someone else. <laughs> make, make yourself someone else's home. Bro, <laughs> you might not have a fucking choice. All, all I'm saying is I just don't, I just don't know. Don't have I, there been times with your wife where you're like, ah, we're not getting along. I don't know if this, uh, we're going to, we're going to make it. Never. Really? Dead serious. Really? Never. Nah. Because when you love, like, I don't, like, it's weird. Like, like, my wife is my family. Like, I can't imagine life without her. That's the woman that I've been with 20 years of, of my life. Like, we argue, we fight, we fuss, we work shit the fuck out. Like, you know what I mean? We stuck with each other. Like, and that's what therapists are for. That's what counselors are for. That's what spiritual advisors are for. So you guys have gone to counseling? Not yet. But I want us to. Over For what? Just because. I, I feel like it's maintenance. This is like, you know, you don't go to the gym when you get fat. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want to maintain and stay in shape. You know what so I mean? Like, I'm not like fat? Taylor who wants to fucking, you know, do crash diets and shit to go to Aruba. Are you water you know fasting? I mean? Oh, I'm sorry, Taylor. I didn't know you were sitting there. I saw Taylor walk through the door just now, man. The yeah. Taylor, the, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we had the door propped open with a trash can. It's yeah. wide as fuck, but she yeah. bumped that trash can, boy. Knocked that shit the fuck out the way. I said, you sure you want to go to Aruba <laughs> in a couple no, weeks? <laughs> Yo. Oh, look at me like that. Oh. Come on, bro. She's out here with the, she got the light yogurt, the probiotic and that's mix. ice cream in that motherfucker. She emptied out all the yogurt and put goddamn. I heard it's whiz. <laughs> she just put whiz cheese in that shit. But I'm saying like, I mean, yeah, I've, I've, I've never felt like that. You might ask my wife something, she may tell you different. You know what I'm saying? But I can, I've, yeah, I've, I've never felt like, yo, we not going to be together. Not, okay. I never broke up. Yeah, we broke up. We broke up for a whole that's fucking year. That's when I turned Muslim. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's when I started doing youth ministry at the mosque. Oh, but that's a long time ago. That was, uh... Ever since you gave yourself to Allah, have you guys broken up? Nah. That Not was like 2003. But that's because I knew I was being a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? And we right. had been together since high school, and I was being a piece of shit. And I knew that I had to be the man that she wanted me to be. So I really, I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking. I started going to the mosque. I was doing youth ministry at the mosque. I was really being a great dude. Yeah. And that's when I ended up, you know, having a menage a trois with my guy, Frosty. So, Frosty, if you're listening, sorry. You know what I'm saying? Tell you, I don't know if you told your woman this story, but she needs to hear it. Okay? We had, we, we, we had, we, we had, we had, we had 
<laughs> Me and my dude Frosty had a menage. I was sharing a everything today. I'm just saying. <laughs> my wife's a side chick. Me and my boy I've are gay. I've said all of this before. It's in the book. I wrote about this in shit. Okay, one. so you guys, so you guys. Uh, I wanted to kill myself because you and Frosty. Adam and Najee with these two whatever. chicks. Yeah, nah, we, yeah. we, we didn't even do it in the same room. He went first. I went next. And like, I was like so, I was so drunk. I was just distraught about myself. I I'm distraught like, that you don't know what a menage a trois. <laughs> it was two girls and me. You said you left. What are you saying? No, he was with the two girls first. Right. And then I went in there and was with the two girls. Right. Why didn't you guys just split up the girls? No, no, he, that is a menage a trois. You stayed in the room. Okay, this is how it started. Yeah. We was playing Uno. Yeah. Right? And I hadn't drank in months. Right. So we was playing Uno. So we decided to, like, play, like, script Uno. Whenever you lose a hand, you take a shot. I'm like, fuck. So mm -hmm. I took a shot. You know what I'm saying? Instead, you either took a shot or took something off. That's what if you lost a hand. Yeah. So I was taking shots, right? Because I was chubby at the time. I was embarrassed. Right. And I want to take my shirt off. And fucking... You didn't want to show that meat, bro? You didn't want to show that fucking <laughs> meat? Hey, bro. Hey. You didn't want to take that meat out? <laughs> So we was all we all got tipsy, and then like you know they was about it, about it. Like they was two aggressive young women. Really, and I remember they they took Frost in the room first. Frost went first. Yeah, because I was fighting it. I'm like, nope, hell no, not gonna be me. I, and I was and I tried to leave, and Frost was like, nah, you can't leave. You been you know hit me with the you been drinking. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't drive. I'm like, fuck, he's right. So I lay on the couch, and then next thing I hear is like Charlemagne. Act like I didn't hear it. It was like, come in here right now. We don't want to hear none of that Allah shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. I'm dead ass serious. Dude, the Lord was testing you. Go yes, on. he was. And I went in the room and it felt like uh, being in the movie Devil's Advocate. Like I could see the shadows on the wall. Yeah. I'm dead ass serious, bro. Yeah. And I'm a very, like my anxiety kicked in and I'm a very indecisive person. Yeah. Uh, you don't know where to nut. You know what I'm saying? You just, it's just wild. It was just wild. Great who'd experience. You, who'd you give the nut to? Which girl? I don't even remember. Frosty? And it was a black girl and a white girl. <laughs> it was a black girl what? Black girl and a white girl. It was a black girl and a white girl. Yeah, man. Now, interesting. Yeah, yeah, How yeah, was yeah. that? Amazing. It was nice? <laughs> it was fun? Incredible on every single level. Like really? anybody, listen, I, I, I treat menage a trois the same way I treat cocaine. Right? right. I've accidentally done cocaine, you know, smoked it with some marijuana. Right. Ask me how it was. I tell you, it was the most greatest high in the world. It right, was. Right, right. That's the truth. Yeah. Terrible for you. But a great high. As most things are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Menage a trois, depending on where you at in your moral standing, depending on where you at in your spiritual life. Yes. Greatest thing in the world, but they may not necessarily be good for you. For me, it wasn't good for me. Because I was going to the moth, I felt like such a hypocrite. I felt like God wasn't going to bless me with my woman back. Right. And like, I bugged the fuck out so much so that they called my father. Right. And they told my father, like, yo, man, he's really talking crazy. I think he might do something to himself. My father drove from Monk's Corner to Columbia, which is an hour and a half away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I told him what happened, and he looked me dead in my eyes, and he goes, so you mean to tell me I drove an hour and a half? Because you drank some liquor and got some pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, well, where the liquor and the liquor. pussy at? Because right? now I'm stressed the fuck out. Now you stressing me the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? And so so that's, just, that's just the truth to the matter. I don't yeah. even know how the fuck we started talking about that. Um, me neither. Me neither. Finding your loved one. Oh, no, no. That was it. It was That was the final straw before you realized you had to get back with your girl. Oh, yeah. And I was yeah. trying to do the right thing. And you know what but I'm saying? Were they gay or were they straight girls that were willing oh, to Oh, no. Nah, they was getting it popping, baby. So they were going after it. They was getting it popping. See, I don't like that. I love it. I don't like, I don't hook up with like any threesomes I've had. If the girls are too into each other, it's not worth it. Why? You got an ego. Yeah. <laughs> My God. The Dude, male ego is so fragile. Dude, it fucking sucks. I don't give a shit. Dude, like, I did one and it, just one of the girls was a lesbian. The other one wasn't. And it's fucking awful, dude. Why? Because you're just, you feel like the referee in a wrestling match. You're just kind of like waiting. Listen, man. You're like breaking them up. All right, come on. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. All right, come on over here. Da, da, da. Not bad. too many things more beautiful than watching two women go at it, bro. I love. Love I love seeing women go at it. Pussy eating. I love two girls who don't really want to eat pussy, and then they go down. They kind of lick it like you're testing if a battery got juice left. You know what I mean? Not just, me. They just just put a little tip on it like that. That I, is the best. I like seeing a woman aggressively eating a vagina and me sitting there learning something. Nah, fuck all that. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> Do that on your own time. I'm here, bro. Like, I'm here for a reason. I'm here. I, listen, I'm the star of the show, baby. You're really not. You guys a, don't need me. You're not when it's two women, though. Well, then what y'all doing? I like it when they're both giving me head at the same time. That yeah. is the greatest feeling that I've ever had, honestly. 
Oh, yeah. yeah Sexually yeah, speaking, yeah. the greatest film ever had these two girls who are both giving me head. They're both looking up at me, and I was pouring champagne on my dick, and they were both like licking it and licking off my balls. And I remember after that, I was walking around. It was at my friend's wedding, and I was walking around, and I was like, that's just how I'm going to have sex from now on. There's no reason I should have sex any differently. That's the only menage two I ever had in my life. Oh, you, you had just one? One. Uh, Never had another one ever again in my life. You don't life. need to. You knocked it all out. White girl, black girl. <sighs> Both each other ate each other out. Yeah, but you know, you know I mean? it would be cool to experience one. Ask your wife. When you're older. Would she no. be down? <laughs> nah, I don't think I want to open that Pandora's box, man. Why not? Because my ego is very fresh. Oh, <laughs> now. Oh, now the ego's part of it. Oh, now. It's the issue. My Interesting. Ego, my ego is very fragile. That's what I told you. You worried the girl's gonna come there and bust it wide open. You don't. She want... probably will. I hey. know you. Listen, there's no man on this planet that can eat vagina better than a woman. Snow the product. Come over and show Charlamagne's <laughs> wife what real happiness is. Okay. That shit is crazy. I don't. I just don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I want to do that. I don't. Would think your I... wife want to do it? Um, I don't know. It's a good question. We've had discussions, but you know what I mean. Nothing, really? Like nothing serious. Like you know. That's my nigga, so we talk like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we have discussions. I don't, it ain't nothing serious. It's nothing that we want uh, or need. You know what I mean? You brought it up or she brought it up? Uh, it depends. Different times. What up, Kim? Praise the Lord, baby. Praise the Lord. We, we, in, there talking about, we in there talking about menage a trois. Oh, no. You know, I'm Christian Baptist Pentecostal. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. This is Chris. This is Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, how you doing? He, and this is Andrew. Hi. Hi. Andrew. Hi. Andrew. I have MTV. Hey. Andrew, this is Cadillac Kimberly. Nice to meet you, Cadillac So you're not Kimberly. in the menage a trois? No. Talking to the mic, sweetheart. Let me get situated. Lord have mercy. New York is a whole nother beast. Yes, it is. Huh? New York ain't no motherfucking joke. That code ain't big enough either. Baby, I done clicked my own going through menopause. This is big enough. You going to me? <laughs> Baby. I've sometimes been night, I'll be thinking somebody sucking my titties to sweat <laughs> dripping down. Like, hell. You ain't never been with a woman, Kim, ever? My pastor's listening. <laughs> Just playing. Um, have I been with a woman? Okay. <laughs> uh have I been with a woman? Just answer the question I'm honestly, to see Kim. What, like, like, when you say with a woman, is yeah. it like, like, okay, I had a woman on me, but I passed. What you That's mean on you? Down. She was on top of you? No, like uh, nibbling and licking. Okay, okay. And I, that's just not my thing at yeah, all. Yeah, I'm yeah. so heterosexual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be the face for it. Now, I did have a man who I used to enjoy watch eating other women. That I select. Wow, what the fuck is that called? I know, right? Laziness. <laughs> hey. <laughs> why? Why did you? Why did that turn you I, on? I don't know. Just with him, though. Just with him, I don't know. Did you like for him to eat you out, too? Oh, he was like everything. But that was it. He was dumb as hell. Yeah, You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? You take him somewhere, you be scared to take him to the bathroom. He go say some stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. two months to fix. Yeah, you know? Yeah. So I was like, uh-uh. And then, like, as soon as I came, I came to my senses every time. You know, I was like, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. X videos gets me there. Yeah. So my folder is, let's just say it's various. <laughs> so I take it you don't have a Valentine's today, Kim? Um, I have a Valentine. I'm sleeping with my neighbor. Oh, really? As a present. That is correct. He's Rastafarian. So, you know, the dick is a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, they I mean, say them Jamaicans the... got them big ass goddamn penises. Is that right? <laughs> it's, I want it enough to where I have to run from it. I don't want to run toward it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to be like, ah, just a little bit of fear. Right. It gets me there. How big would you say it is? <sighs> I'd probably say 10, but I stop at 7 because I have to walk after Your uterus is 7 inches. That's it's probably man. not that because even my doctor said my mother and I are made up clothes. That's the gospel truth my right hand to God. Your mother and you are what? Made up clothes, have tight vaginas. Oh, made up clothes. Yes. I like that term. That's hilarious. You just hilarious. brought back flashbacks because I remember when my wife... Made up clothes. <laughs> no. When my wife cheated on me and I and with this dude in college and... I asked her how big his dick was, and she was. She responded just like she's like, oh. Okay. Oh, now I've had dick so big. Yeah. Sound that I had to call a is pretty big. You had to call a friend to help me. Yeah. But like, oh my god, and, and his his penis was so big. He used mm -hmm. to. I used to always say that's why he had that little hump in his back when he walked. He was the landlord where I used to live, honey. Right. Okay. And after we started sleeping together, I guess you know I had seven more years of free rent, but I paid for it, but not in a monetary way, if you will. Right. Really? Right. And, you were tricking. And, and we were good together. We fell in love, and uh. It, it was good, but when it was bad, it was bad. You know. What is it like taking a dick that's too big for your uterus? It's well, this white guy I used to do it with, but he was just so nasty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He 
had sex with me. I hadn't had sex in a minute. And he made me go to the ER. He made me bleed so bad. And I was like, you can't believe the hype, babe, when it comes to the white meat. Really? You can't. And he was good in the bed. He just was so nasty. I was like, Why you, what do you call nasty? Want to piss on me? It wasn't even, birth, wasn't even his birthday. Like on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, the first person ever want to piss on the Friday. I was like, these white motherfuckers got it fucked up. Yeah, yeah. even a special occasion. He just right. wanted, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mama yeah. ain't died now. He just want to yeah. piss on me. Yeah, yeah. Did now, you ever did let him? That ain't the top. Come on, <laughs> now, <Tim. Did> you? <laughs> They ain't gonna let me usher after this. Do you do that? The- <laughs> Was he taking care of you financially or something? Oh, now you know I've never been dick whooped, but I've been bought, and that's just real talk. Okay, I've been I've been bought. That's just real talk. What does that right mean? There. That means I had a dude that had money and I stayed with him because he had pockets stick his hands. Really? Oh, yeah. Him taking care of me or a bitch that he ain't going to fuck but eight times calling me and I'm going to get a job behind this bitch and give up my car and all that hell now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Plus, I think people put too much stock into monogamy because I struggle with it. And I try to be transparent because, you know, I'm getting up there and I got to sell the, I gotta sit my ass down now for real, Charlamagne. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's time to sit my ass down. So I was dating the cable man and we was hitting it off. I mean, he had me feeling like that chick because I'm traditional. Why? He, Why did he have you feeling like that chick? Because he took care of me. You know what I'm saying? Like Free cable is what you call taking care no, of you? No, no. I had to still pay the cable. He ain't got that kind of hookup. Okay. No, but just like covering me. You know, like if the tire go flat or... You know what I'm saying? Or just little shit. Need, not little, because he did it on a consistent basis. Just yeah, coverage. Because yeah. I give coverage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, man, and the man of my dreams passed. Okay, he he was the last man I had that was really somebody who I really, really cared about. And when you go from 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 what I had to what's out here, not saying all of it, just what I've encountered, encountered thus far. Mm-hmm. It's like going from sugar to shit. Yeah. And very seldom you get everything on your list. He was everything on my list and he died. How'd he die? Oh, at work. And I used to tell him all the time, you're going to drop dead at that job. And that's what happened. He was... Um, what, he had a heart attack or something? Yeah. So he was everything but healthy. Did you have healthy on okay. your list? Yeah, I did have healthy. I should have put it in red. I yeah. had one in red. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. But since he died, it's just been like, mm, you know, I just really ain't even been thinking about no dude like that. Yeah. But the cable man, he reminded me so much of him. He even said things just like Ken used to say. And then when he spent the night one night, he was getting ready for work in the, in the mirror like Ken used to. And I came behind him with his shirt off and I put my head on his back. And I was like, this is, this right here is something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm all like, first, to me, first is, 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 uh, it's spiritual then it's natural that's how I operate you know what I'm saying most things and that's how it was with him and I was like man so anyway long story short I'm thinking okay we finna go somewhere we really really connecting we doing the shit we supposed to be doing we done met who we need to meet you know what I'm saying so I told him I said I used to struggle with monogamy the cable man yeah and after that he went crazy Really? really? And I was like, damn. So I said, if that's the case, he need to get the hell on there anyway. If, if something like that gonna make him buck. Why do people struggle with monogamy, though? Like, I think that being faithful is quite easy when you just, when you talk about committing, when you just commit to one woman and say, this is who I want to be with, it ain't a problem. I get bored easy, though. I'm just being honest. Really? And I, you know, but like, I'm a big advocate for therapy now. I was so anti-therapy. I was like, cough, cough is going to cure it. I'm going to pray it away, going to fast it away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now, my therapist thinks I'm a lesbian, I'm sure, because I send her flowers all the time from Carruthers. None of that bullshit, okay? Not that 1 800. Okay, we're talking Carruthers. That's Cadillac what the flowers. the fuck is Carruthers? Now. Oh, it's not. <laughs> I got a lot of questions. Carruthers is everything. <laughs> oh my God. It's Cadillac flowers. They Cadillac flowers. Okay. And so, uh, I forgot my point. Andrew, go. You got questions. I have so many. No uh, um, Listen, we can always come back to points. This is the podcast for. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the struggling with monogamy thing is interesting. I don't judge you for that. I used to, I think. Right. But you didn't struggle with that person uh-uh. that you got along with, the cable guy. Right? The cable guy's Ken? Is it Ken no, the cable Ken guy? Passed. I used to love Ken so much, but I still love him. I love Sorry, him so Ken, much. what did he do for a living? He owned two paint and body shops. So the paint and body shop, Ken, you and him were so in love yes. that you weren't really seeking any other validation uh-huh. outside. That's the relationship. But that's right. what that's why I say that's why monogamy's not hard when you got the when right one. When you have right the right one. one. But, now, but am I gonna get everything on my list again? And I, put I don't think you need everything. There. I don't think you need Maybe everything. Not. I think you just need enough. You know what I mean? Not to be faithful. My question Enough. to you is. Yeah, please. I'm scared that 
Say it's going to be, because I'm so, and this, and this is on oh my mom, I promise in Jesus' name, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. I'm so good by myself, Charlamagne, I promise you. Mm -hmm. I yeah. date like it's tennis. And that don't mean fucking. But if I do want to fuck, I'll do it because I do what I want. You right. know what I'm saying? Because God know how to battle and he loves me anyway. Right. You know what I'm, with that? I'm just saying, some people are like, oh, they clutch their prayers and then you keep it too real. Ain't nothing right. being sexually liberated. Okay. Yeah. But I'm so good by myself. I really am. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm just not pressed. You know, so I don't know. I I, I don't even pray about it because it ain't even really what's on my mind right now. I don't think a man will ever be able to satisfy you because you love Ken so much. You think? Yeah, because you, you said you was comparing even the cable guy to Ken. Yeah. And you said everything on your list is attributes that Ken had. Right. So what other man is going to be able to be Ken? You well, wanna, now the, you the, the know cable something? man had an Audi belly button and that shit turned me off. Ken would never. <laughs> It's not, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. He had a Audi belly button. That's not his fault, though. I'm just saying. Kim? Are we talking about the list? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, you, Yo. had any? you had any on your list? I had any. Kim, when I was and a... I had a breast man. Excuse me. When I was a kid, right? Yeah. There was... Uh, I had befriended a couple kids in the city, and they were just these like kind of wild kids, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they got this idea in their head that the key to your apartment... Mm -hmm must be the key to another apartment that there can't be that many unique keys and i swear to god these kids walked around the east village trying the key in every different apartment building they wow. went to wow i shit you not we found another fucking building that the key worked in wow and that's what i feel i never thought about that that's interesting as fuck right but that's what I feel Ken is. Really? It's like that's, that's you might have to try a lot of different uh, apartment buildings, but eventually you'll find someone whose key fits in you. And that's another thing as far as <laughs> fine, fine, fine. I hear. Whose dick was bigger, the Jamaican or Ken? Jamaican. No, I think Ken. You know what? The Jamaican, the Rastafarian, his dick ain't big as he think. Really? Uh-uh, it really ain't. How? What that mean? Yeah. That's what I, he, he, he gonna ask me one night we be laying in the bed talking about, uh, is it big enough? What you gonna do if it ain't? Yeah, and yeah, if, yeah. And if you, I ain't never asked no nigga if my, period, my pussy wet enough or was the head good enough because I know. You know it was good. You ain't never asked about that shit ever? I'm a, when I, if I'm gonna do it. You gonna say, do you, you enjoying this, baby? Nothing it you? depends on what he want. Each man is different. You don't want to, you, before you even suck a man dick, unless it's just in the moment, you need to ask him first how he like his dick suck. Cause I ain't trying how to do you ask that question? And he a shaft man. There's a menu for dick sucks? That? It depends on the person who's giving the head. Because me, it's a job. I want to be through as soon as possible. But I'm going to make you think I enjoy it like you're supposed to with your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we tell you how to how we like it in the most supportive way? <laughs> I mean that. Because sometimes I give encouragement to girls, but they're not really picking up on it. And I don't want to just like grab their hand and be like, well, this is how you do it. Just tell her. Yeah, that's that, that shit, I do, <laughs> but you can't say that's that shit. Like, there was this girl, she was doing this weird thing where, like, you know what? They jerk the shaft while they're sucking it. Ooh, I love happy it. Happy Valentine's Day. Yo, love it. Love it. Wait for it. What she did is she went no, underneath the balls and she would, like, jerk the balls up with the shaft. Oh, that's regular. No, that's painful. Oh, that's torture. Torture that's for like, Dude. Shit. So the balls would come, like, I must be a masochist up. then because I'm, I'm one of them squeeze my balls. No, no, this is not squeeze the but balls. Here are the balls, the right? Here are the balls, yeah, yeah. right? Underneath the water bottle. Okay. So instead of just jerking this or cupping the balls, yeah. she goes underneath, and grabs the up. ball, and then starts jerking the balls Oh, no, 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 no. Dude. I ain't with the dad. My dick looked like a French bulldog. You didn't tell her to stop, though. What? You didn't tell her to stop. I just went silent. That's yeah, right. Because <laughs> I, so, I, I figured if she heard nothing, yeah, then she yeah. knows something. She knows something's off. <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah. the second she did anything different, I was like, ugh. <laughs> Why you just say ow? <laughs> say what? Why you say ow? <laughs> yeah, ow could probably do it. But at the same time, like, I'm empathetic. It's like, this girl's already got my dick in her mouth. So it's like, how many more things can you say to someone who's already willing to put your dick in yeah. their mouth, right? Oh, my gosh. Can you say right? ow without looking like a bitch in the bedroom? But if, I go if ooch. you say ow, I'm going to feel bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, my sound, my ooch. Job. Yeah. yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. So what is the best way to tell you like, I know exactly how I like my dick suck. I'm 35. Right. I know right. the exact what. There's not right. many things that you're going to do to surprise me at this point in my right. life, right? Uh, but I wouldn't say that. And the Bible says consider all things. There you go. I've considered it's a lot. It's Valentine's Day, Kim. No, Come real, on, give real, some dick sucking Just tips. about that, Kim, for yeah, the Bible. Some dick sucking tips. For the Bible. How old was Jesus when he died? 33. I'm 35. So what I'm saying is I got two more years of dick sucks under my belt. So I know a lot of shit. I've considered well, a lot know, of things. The Bible says the Lord can add 15 years to 18 years of your life like he did Hezekiah. 
Okay? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what to tell you. All, all I'm saying is, how do we say exactly what we want to a girl without on offending the woman, you? It varies. Like, yeah. I mean, like, I got some shit I might want to say, and one dude will be all lit, and the other one pack his shit. So you got to know who you yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah. What would you say? You'll scare, the, you'll scare some guys. Right. Yeah. My, like me, my thing is this. When, once I turn 40, yeah. I promise myself no inhibitions. None! And if you can't handle it, then we don't need to be fucking. Damn right. Like what would you say that would scare a guy would, off? Yeah. Oh, that damn herpes flare up. <laughs> Let's reschedule. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> okay. That'll, or get some iodine That'll do in it. my panties. Herpes is way regular than people think one it is. Two people have it. I know motherfuckers be fronting. It's about three people in this okay, room right one now. And two. One and two. Not Paige, but she's my baby. There's a lot of motherfuckers. Paige, you look like a But herpes not an STD though. Herpes is a skin disease. Huh? She look just like the girlfriend of the guy on Million Dollar List. That's how I know she ain't doing this and that. <laughs> she, she big time real estate. But she a pretty girl. You got, she, you got herpes for real? Hell no. Oh, oh, oh. And me and the roster, we went and got everything done. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I trust. I like it raw. And I don't want to have to worry about it. Yeah. If I'm going to do it, I want to be able to do whatever the fuck I want with it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't oh, you raw the cable man and everything? Me and the cable man, we got tested, go down to grade it. But you go to um, Walgreens, it's free on Friday. What, the STD HIV. test? HIV. You know, you get HIV tested. But you got to test for more than HIV, though. No, I'm just saying, in case you want to test for oh, HIV. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got yeah, you. Yeah, but we went to Grady, and Grady give you, like, everything. They tell you about what your mama got. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Because 40, 40 don't feel that old. It but, ain't but, old. But you would be thinking, like, damn, I'm 40. Fuck, I'm just going to raw everything because I'm old. I don't got much time 40 left. 40 ain't old. Hell no. I'm <laughs> trust. And the young boys be on me. I don't know what it is. No, let me finish losing my weight because you know I got ill. That's why I wasn't doing no jokes for a long time. Yeah, and then yeah. When the bitch got ill, she got the billboard for the hospital. Get into it. There you go. Six commercials and then six locations in the best location. For being sick? For being ill. Uh huh. Under the weather. Okay. Uh huh. So I thank God. So now I'm back. And, <laughs> I don't I wanna, know and, and the main going reason on. I wanted to come, baby, was to let it be known what I want. There you go. Yeah, I want to put it in the atmosphere. There you go. Okay. And, and on top of everything else, that's one of the reasons why I came in Charlamagne. I'm grateful. I, I want you to know I'm grateful. I love you, Kim. I mean it in my soul. Charlamagne, who turned Todd. you on to me? Um, Todd. I don't know. I started watching videos on YouTube. I don't know. You don't know nobody. I really don't know. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I saw first you know who you Cadillac sound Kimberly like videos. every once in a while? Yeah, all right. Bernie Mac. Oh, he was everything to me. <laughs> yeah, he really was. was. I I'm grateful. More. I'm on. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. Like, right? What was you? you on, what, what you was on YouTube? But what, what, did somebody used to play the YouTube video somewhere? Or well, this is did a site post it. I did. I, I worked at Radio One, baby. They took me through it. When I got done, I said, "Fuck all y'all." I'm gonna say what I think, and I opened the laptop. Yeah. I went to the comedy club first, and it was all about you know who you friends with, and if you're too funny, this that. I said, "Fuck all that." Plus the capacity wasn't but 160. I said, "I ain't gonna never get where I'm going." Yeah. So I went and took me some classes and some Mac classes and bought me a laptop. And I said, "I'm gonna say what the fuck I think." I said, "I'm gonna get a show from this." And I'd be damned if everybody didn't get turned on to it quick. Sandra Rose was the first one the next day to get a hold of it. Maybe it was that site. It was somewhere I saw. I started watching your YouTube video. I don't know where it was. And Charles King saw it That's how I got signed To William Morris And when everything Was lined up That's when I got sick Okay Then when Okay it took Like I had both My hips replaced Both I'm fucking talking You wouldn't even know it and Shout out to the Jamaican Okay you wouldn't even know it <laughs> That's how I got The billboard and stuff For the hospital Because you wouldn't even know it As I told you Shalom Man it got down on me Yeah And the recovery Is like something You wouldn't even believe Yeah it's Okay tough. and when everybody Like Kim this that and other, I say nothing funny right now You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying This is a major major Adjustment You couldn't find life. no humor In the hip, hip uh -uh. Well, she, uh -uh. Let me just get. You might not this. be a real comedian then, Kim. No, nothing I'm gonna Andrew, shit yet. Maybe later. Maybe later. Yeah, yeah. I got enough other stuff. Andrew could have found. You'd have found some funny in that shit. We right? just found it. Maybe later. Not right oh, yeah, now. Right. The roster. <laughs> yeah, right. maybe later. Not right now. It you could find it right now. Let's mine it. <laughs> Come on. What was so funny about the hips? <laughs> oh, and this one guy in X ray was trying to holler at me when I laid down and he took the x-ray. He said, you got hardware? I said, oh, he said, I would have never thought it. I said, you still wouldn't think it. What's hardware? That's what they call it when you, you got artificial stuff. Oh, right? got you, got you, got did you. you. Got ask you. The, did you ask the doctor, like, make the hips a little wider, like, uh -huh. give you a little extra? Uh -huh. I said, just get me through it and wake me up and still let me put my head and, and my, lip, my my feet back behind my head. Let me just, I think I'm even more limber now than I was. I really, really do. 
I wow. mean, to fuck a Rastafari and you got to have rhythm and speed. Right. <laughs> you do. Right. You do. Right. And a green card. And everybody was like, he, you going to fuck him? Okay. Everybody was like, you going to fuck him? You going to fuck him? I was like, I'm not going to fuck him. It was like, you going to fuck him? You, he going to break you down. Now I'm breaking down about twice a week. But but I, I'm, I, it ain't good like it was at first. At first, I was just thirsty. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I got a straw and ice and everything, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's pay some bills and then we're going to come back and do some hot topics. That's one thing let's that uh, Cadillac Kimberly does very well on YouTube. Uh, Butcher Box. Butcher Box delivers healthy, 100% grass fed and grass finished beef, free range organic chicken, and heritage breed pork. I can't believe Chris has me advertising pork. Chris, how are you advertising pork? Aren't you Jewish? Yeah, Butcher Box is good. Yeah, but he's you Chinese Jewish, bro. It's oh different. Oh, my God, bro. Asians love pork, man. They don't got cows out there. Choose from curated boxes, including a mix of high-quality beef, chicken, and pork, or customize your own box to get exactly what you and your family love. Each box comes with at least 9 to 11 pounds of meat, which is enough for 24 individual size meals, and Great. all meat is frozen at the peak of freshness in individual biodegradable packaging, mm. then delivered right to your doorstep. Mm. It's incredibly convenient. You can even choose your deliver delivery frequency with the customizable subscription. Think about that. You can get meat delivered to your door. Think about all the women we're listening to this right now who are alone on Valentine's Day single as fuck and would love to get some meat delivered to their door Taylor I'm talking to you <laughs> alright for two free filet mignons free bacon and $20 off your order go to butcherbox.com slash idiots and enter the promo code idiots to check out go now this is over a $50 value and available for a limited time that's butcherbox.com slash idiots and enter the promo code idiots at checkout now Who's boycotting Gucci in here? I'm, I'm Team Louis anyway. <laughs> boycotting Gucci, Andrew? I've been boycotting Gucci for 35 years. Yeah, you, this, here's the thing. You can't <laughs> My boycott. My bank account is boycotting Gucci. You can't <laughs> boycott what you can't <laughs> afford. Same bank. You, you, listen, you can't boycott what you can't afford. Yep. Listen, this, this is a very first world protest. Yes. All right? Like, yo, I, I get the spirit of it, and I'm with you in spirit. But I don't buy fucking Gucci. You know what I'm saying? And I and I tell everybody out there, I see you talking about it on Instagram. A lot of y'all simply can't, you know, boycott what you can't afford mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm boycotting Victoria's Secret models. Word. You know? I'm not fucking none of them. You could, though. <laughs> you could. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, second of all, second of all, this is, the, this is the wild thing to me with the Gucci thing. Yeah. What would make you think that a... 400-year-old fashion house from Europe gave a fuck about you niggers. <laughs> All right? Like, like how do y'all, how are y'all disappointed? Like, how are you disappointed? This is my thing. How are you disappointed by this? Yo, they never asked you to love them. Charlamagne, they did it on purpose. This was the intended oh, yeah, yeah. goal. You've been saying that for a while. This is what people don't realize. Like, You've been when Soldier Boy came out, and Soldier Boy was like, "That's it. I'm not wearing no more Gucci." You think the people at Gucci were like, "Oh no, nah. How could you? They don't even make money off Gucci. They were so fucking happy. The last thing that the people at Gucci want is Lil Pump rapping about it. Is Soldier Boy wearing it? That is devastating for their brand. You think they? You, th you don't think they like the free promo? It's the wrong promo. They're trying to sell shit to super rich motherfuckers. Yeah. The last thing they want is a sweaty, raggedy, Gucci headband yeah. around some kid talking about how he's going to shoot people that are going to come into his house. Now, I did a little research on this. Not much because I really don't give a fuck. I did find out that most people under the age of 35 are the people that are most buying Gucci. And I also found out that Gucci doesn't even really make a lot of money off the clothes. The clothes is their loss leader. The clothes is for their promo and the market and they make their money off the handbags it's and the sexy, fragrances yeah. and all that other shit. And Gucci is owned by this uh, other bigger company that owns like Balenciaga and YSL and Puma. Like they, It's only like two, three, Fashion houses. Well, you know, Fendi, Four. Fendi making a major comeback now. You see? I'm not wearing none of that I'm shit. I'm just saying. Yeah, I ain't nice. buying it either. I'm, uh, it, they I mean, don't want it. It's no different than a nightclub, right? Yeah. The nightclub selects certain people that Are you they want inside. Discriminate? Hell yeah, they discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> you never yeah. been discriminated against? Yeah. Absolutely it's they just, discriminate. It, it's really weird to watch people act like But these Gucci idiots gives thinking that they them. really give a fuck. It was so funny. We're not doing it. It's like, yeah, that's the fucking goal. Why do you think they put blackface on shit? And then, and then it was ugly. 
Say again. It was ugly. All the shit red. is ugly. I was like, I, I couldn't get into it. Now like, listen, it's, it's, I thought I found it quite sad and quite hilarious that somebody sat around and said it's gonna be blackface season in the fashion world this <laughs> year. Like the fact that they were putting blackface on everything was like, wow. Dude, like this is an old story, right? Like yeah. first of all, the blackface thing I think was a couple of years ago. They didn't do it just recently, but uh, it's like, been up for like six months. The turtleneck on the Gucci, the side. turtleneck one, but yeah. there was another thing that the came Montclair out. had been out, been out. There's yeah, a couple yeah, things yeah. that had been out, right? But like, wasn't there something with Tommy Hilfiger back in the day where well, like Tommy allegedly said, said he doesn't want black people wearing his yeah. shit or something like that? Then. I don't think that was true though. I think that's I, that was a legend. fake story. Was a, yeah. But I think what what they were trying to say is they don't want he doesn't want like hood motherfuckers wearing the shit. Let me tell you something. Gucci doesn't care about Rich, the CEO of fucking Citibank, was a black guy wearing his fucking Gucci suit. It's a class thing. What they don't want is dudes embracing the hood. They don't want dudes embracing white trash shit wearing Gucci. Now, I don't know. They I'm want t- the highest class. Some African king that's wearing Gucci, they're like, hell yeah, rock that shit, I, baby. I, I think, I, I agree with you, but I think that might have changed over the past few years. Why? Because if you notice, Gucci started putting big logos on everything. Only, there's only like one demographic that loves big logos on everything. Why has sales been doing that forever? Like Louis Vuitton's been doing that forever. Like this is ugly ass polo too. But who buys the polos? No, it's it's the big they ones, buy those things that have the logo everywhere because they want everybody to know where it is. Real rich people, they don't want the logo. But everywhere. that's what I'm saying. Right. So they started right. making more product with logos on it, and they hired Dapper Dan. You know what I'm saying? That says a lot. You hire Dapper Dan to right. be whatever. I'm just saying, I, I listen, all I'm saying is this. Don't, why are you surprised? These are fucking institutions that have been around why hundreds of for years. It? If you really want to affect Gucci, start wearing it. They will be furious. What did Chris Dow say? <laughs> Chris Dow, right? Well, didn't, they're like, oh, we don't want this associated with the hood shit. Da, da, da. Like, this is, every single brand does this. It's not shocking. Yeah, they're bougie-ass elitist Europeans who scoff at you. Scoff, <laughs> scoff at you wearing their clothing. But they also know that, that like, hip-hop runs through things like trends. Right, so they so they're doing it for the longevity of brand. They're like, oh shit, shit is popping for six months in hip hop, and then they move to the next one. Not Gucci and Louis. Not Gucci and Louis. They've managed to yeah, price Gucci themselves so popping, out. The rapper named himself Gucci. Right, and that frightened them. They're like, please let this guy get locked up. They probably paid. <laughs> they probably paid, dude. When he shot the other guy, they were like, please go away. You know what I mean, <laughs> dude? For real, dude. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang frightens. Gucci. Yeah. Frightened. I just, listen, man, I just, I'm gonna be honest, I just don't give a fuck about no goddamn Gucci. I don't give a fuck about no Louis. I see you there with your Louis purse, oh, Kim. Okay. I don't care about none of that shit. And you, I hate the fact that everybody all of a sudden is on some, this is why we gotta support our own. Bruh, don't nobody gotta disrespect me to make me support my own. Okay? <laughs> Everything I got on right now is black owned. Yes. Even my jeans. My jeans is Art Me's Chaos. My hoodie is served fresh. I got a pea coat in the other room for Alexander Nash, my man Ernie. It's all all black owned black company why because that's the type of shit that means something to me remember how last week we were talking about value mm-hmm. yeah Gucci may cost thousands of dollars in the store but that shit don't mean nothing to me this this hoodie means something to me because of what's on it Right, my enemies will be my footstool you know what I'm saying Spitz. and the fact it's black owned like th- these jeans I got on a pair of jeans from a black man before this I used to wear mad PRPS why because my guy Don was the owner of PRPS he used to design PRPS jeans black right. dude from Virginia now he owns Osmi's Chaos that shit means something to me so all of this shit only has the value that you motherfucking put on it because mm-hmm. I'll go I'll walk by the Gucci store and see all that shit that cost thousands and thousands that shit look like garbage to me it is yeah, garbage but I have to have a nice bag though. it's just me you yeah. know what I'm saying I, like, but what makes a bag I'm nice so frugal um, it's just if it's quality, if it lasts, you know what I'm saying, and if it's and if it's trendy and it, and, it, and it's it's not dated at all, you know it. Can't but who be dated. decides that it's nice? That's the I thing. Like it's like it. I decided why. Because nice. let the, me see your bag. The, 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 the um, durability of it. What you got in that bag, Kim? You drove up here now. <laughs> Kim might have some bullshit in there. Oh, Kim? I have no bullshit. No. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, look, I have like OCD minimum because like I every time I get out the car, I got to take something, got to clean it. You know, like I was dating this one guy and uh, he was my Uber driver, honey. Huh? Never again with the help. But uh, he uh, he told me one day he said, "Shout out to all the Uber drivers out there. I don't look at you as the help." <laughs> oh, he was a trip, baby. He was he had erectile dysfunction. He's from uh, New York and he's Haitian and Jamaican. So I was like, well, Haitian and Jamaican, you know what I'm saying? He's gonna put it. 
No. He had erectile dysfunction. Then, you, you'd be surprised how many black men have it young, like early 40s. Yo, a Haitian with erectile dysfunction is mad funny. Soft pee pee. And then it wasn't circumcised. Soft pee pee. Wasn't circumcised, and he still wanted me to suck it. Whoa. And then, listen to this. He had he had the diabetes so bad, he was bleeding behind the eyes. And if he had an orgasm, it wouldn't come through his penis. It would go through his bladder and come out his urine. So you had to pee the nut? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> That shit confused the fuck out of me just now. Hold on. Yeah, Erectile so dysfunction, confused, yeah. diabetes. And Being behind the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. That's and why he was so mean, I think, because he was frustrated. He's still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. How did he, like, pick you up? How did how did that happen? I was lonesome, I think. You know what I'm saying? He was so masculine, you and think? I love a masculine man. Yeah. And I just, I, you know, I like to cook for my man, I like to clean, I like to rub his back. You know what I'm saying? I'm old school. I like to fix his plate. I don't like my man to wash his own clothes. It's just how I am. Yeah. You know, and he was the, and he was a, a traditional male. He covered me. You know what I'm saying? So he made sure the house was good. Just made sure I was good. You know, we, it was it was a good situation. But one day I was walking my dog. Yeah. And I said, uh, does your erectile dysfunction, I said, does your diabetes affect your libido? And he said, yes. And I was like, uh. And I felt like I shouldn't have had to figure it out. I felt like he should have told me that. Yeah, sugar. A lot of people with diabetes do that too. I think the sugar will do that to you, make your dick not hard. Yeah, sugar and, and, fuck and, you and, up. and then I, just, I made him an appointment and everything to get the dick right. And we had the pills, and so we were laying yeah, in the bed. Been a good time for a four hymns commercial, Chris. Facts. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Shout out to hymns. Get Four-hims. your dick up. <laughs> yeah, oh there are pills God. he can take to get his dick up, or he could just not eat sugar anymore. That's massive. No, he went hang on. He just he gone now. It's, I mean, it, yeah, he had so. sugar so bad when he went to the doctor in the doctor's office. They opened up a bag and each arm. In the doctor's office. That's how bad his sugar was. Damn. But his wife had left him. He went through a deep depression. And that's when I met him. And I Can you like explain was... to people the term sugar that don't know it? Oh, diabetes. Yeah, yeah. Type yeah. 2 and type 1. He had type 2. But... Yeah. It's called the sugar. Type 1 is white sugar. Type 2 is brown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the truth. Y'all ain't know that? Y'all so crazy. <laughs> how did we get to this? How did we get to this? What are we talking about? No. Oh, no, we were talking about the bags. I guess that the point of the bags oh, yeah, is yeah. like, we put all the value on the bags. It's just so dumb. <laughs> we got all the way out. It's so this dumb. Is a, this, is, this is what the Brilliant Idiots podcast this is. is you got to keep the fuck up. Like, I was all trying right, to you got to explain... about diabetes. Now we back on the goddamn... Now we back on the bags. bags. <laughs> it's just like, no bags have any value at all. Like, it's so stupid that these bags cost 20 grand. Their bags cost 20 grand. Yeah, I know. Like, let so me tell stupid. You. Why would anybody buy this no fucking bag? Because the bags say... When, Sister, when what you did the bag your do? Your shoes and your bag. You know what I'm saying? That's the first thing we look at as women is our shoes and our bag. Yeah, but why are you trying in. to impress each You're other? You're not trying to impress. It's just a level that you'd like to maintain for yourself. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. You know yeah. what you could do with 20 grand? You know how much you could maintain yourself with 20 grand? Yeah, that's student loans. Frugal, you though, could like, fix your friend's Haitian debt. On, one, another one of the things a lot of men like about me is I don't spend all their money. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Even like Big Boy from Outclass, Shirley, you know, she drives a rose and she shop at Family Dog. That's my girl. You know what I'm saying? That's how you get down and that's how I am. But there, there are certain things I will splurge on. Yeah, right. like a bag. Listen, I'm glad that they did the Gucci boycott because it's going to save a lot of people some money tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of dudes out there who girls like Gucci and probably is better than Gucci shit for Valentine's Day. Yeah. Nope. Mm-mm. We boycotting Gucci mm-hmm. for three months because T.I. said so. Mm-hmm. But T.I. said don't go to Houston's, honey. I said I don't care if they got the dogs in the water holes. I'm going to get that Hawaiian steak. And I did. Okay? <laughs> he ain't my damn male. That's what he want to be. <laughs> you got to stand for something, I Kim. do stand for something. I stand for plenty. But they was, they they beat up a black girl in Houston, didn't they? What happened in that Houston? That was after the fact. And that's what they say. I don't know. All I know is Houston's been good to me. My very first vlog, I talked about Houston's. And I'm not going to go because they felt like they were mistreated. That's what they say. I don't know. There's both sides. I consider all things. Hmm. They were good to me. I've been good to them. Don't Floyd I Mayweather the situation now, Kim. I think that's a very logical answer. Something. I do stand for something. I don't fuck nobody husband no more. Now, what you say about that? <laughs> that's standing for something, and that's hard. Shit. <laughs> and trust, I ain't had no married man that had me on the floor like Glenn Close with my wrist slit. That was the wife. And yeah. I ain't bragging. I'm just saying, it's some men out there that can hold down two houses. That's just the gospel truth. A lot of people don't want to admit that, but it's the truth. Right. And, the, and the married men that I dealt with, like everybody know the judge. I went with the judge for a long time. He was What married. judge? He's a judge in Fulton County. Okay. And so, <laughs> met him when I worked at Radio 1. And he was good to me. When I first met Ken, he was married. Yeah. And after 10 months, I gave him an ultimatum. Just because you married don't mean you with the right person. Now, I don't do it anymore because I've evolved. You know what I'm saying? But it mm-hmm. used to be a time I did not give a fuck. And you would think that I was the wife. That's not bragging. That's just for you to understand how I was so invested. Yeah. 
A lot of people would say that they feel the way you feel when it comes to the Gucci situation. Because I saw Kodak Black say basically the same thing. Floyd Mayweather definitely said the same thing. Adrian Broner said the same thing. They're just like, yo, wear what you want to wear. They didn't give a fuck. They, Kodak said he felt like what, what happened wasn't racist. So, I mean, it is a thing, right? If you feel like they weren't being racist and it don't bother you, you can still fuck uh-uh. with it. It's people that don't, there are places I don't frequent because of how they treat people, but that's not one of them. I'm not going to live my life based on what a motherfucker tell me to do based yeah. on their experience. That's just not how I get down. And I can decide to do something and nobody in the room agree with me or do it with me, but I, I'll walk alone. Some things are universal, though. Like, uh, for Kodak, right? Kodak's young. So Kodak probably doesn't know what the history of blackface is. Kodak, Kodak Kodak literally said, man, they got all kind of ski masks. <laughs> he said it's all type of ski masks. So he just looks at it in that way. Mm-hmm. But if you was to break down the history of Sambo and minstrel shows, he might look at it in a different way. Yeah. Floyd is older. So I got to hold Floyd to a different standard, but I really don't hold Floyd to a different standard because Floyd don't give a fuck. Floyd, Floyd, and Floyd is so poor, all he got is money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Like literally, that's that's all. Floyd's whole existence stands on the almighty dollar. He has never publicly made a stand for anything except for his money. And that's cool. Mm -hmm. So I don't get upset when I see a Floyd Mayweather running up in Gucci. To me, that's just high level trolling. Floyd said something on that video. Floyd said, um, man, everybody just seeking attention. Floyd, you're kind of doing the same thing by having TMZ catch you going inside the Gucci store. That's just a different, you just took a different approach to the clout chasing, but you still use Gucci to get a bump. I wouldn't be surprised if Gucci threw him some dollars to do that. Probably. I label him as Maybe. deplorable when I saw what him. What about Beyonce wearing the uh, blackface uh, jacket? I saw that. Beyonce. That was old. Yeah, what do you think Daddy about Christ it? Beyonce? The who? <laughs> Just well, black people still can't do blackface. I mean, oh, yeah, they can't. No, I don't know. Ask Drake about that. No, I don't think. I don't. I, Ask Drake about that. Oh, I, now half white. No, now half black people ain't black. Okay. Keep that, that be, same energy listen. with Obama then. With that white president, Obama, huh? Huh, Taylor? <laughs> you like that white president, Obama, or what? <laughs> so, Obama the whitest president, or what? Keep that same energy, that yo. Would be, that, would be, that would be an interesting question to ask Beyonce. Let's ask her. You know what I'm saying? Why, 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 why that fashion choice? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I don't never see a reason to empower blackface in any way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I don't know why Beyonce did that. I saw the picture. I don't even know how old that was. Mm-hmm. I saw the picture, but I don't know. I just, listen, man, when you know better, you do better. And right. even if you do know better and you don't give a fuck, you got the right to not give a fuck either. Mm-hmm. I don't know why people are acting like Floyd Mayweather let them down. Floyd is, let me tell you how bulletproof Floyd is. When everybody went to Trump Tower, mm. right? Kanye, Steve, Ray Lewis, and Chris Shepmichael sang for him. Everybody picked and choosed. All right, Chris Shepmichael, easy. You know, they don't fuck with her no way. God bless her. Oh but it's easy. Oh, she canceled. You wasn't fucking with her no way. All right? <laughs> when the last time you bought a Chris Shepmichael album, right? Mm-hmm. right. Then uh, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis don't do shit. Like, hey, we don't, he's a commentator. Who cares? Like, mm-hmm. all right, Ray, Ray Lewis. Steve Harvey, they like, ah, we fuck with Family Feud, but... Ah, you know what, Steve? We're going to be off you for a little while. Mm-hmm. Kanye and Floyd made it very difficult because mm. <laughs> they fuck with Ye. They fuck with his music. They fuck with, fuck with his sneakers. It's Floyd kept issue. talking about that McGregor fight. It was like, we don't want to cancel him just yet. We got to watch that motherfucking fight. Mm-hmm. Fight comes out, does crazy numbers. Mm-hmm. Now, Floyd retired. Fuck Floyd. He canceled. He's a coon. He's this. He's that. Mm-hmm. Floyd, it ain't shit. Right. Yeah. Like, why it took now... To say you don't fuck with Floyd no more. It's because Floyd ain't active. I right. feel sorry for Floyd because they don't. Him burning. Floyd's not providing anything to them. No. Once that somebody provides something to you, it's hard to cancel. That's why Beyonce is untouchable. She's providing. She's providing. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, you, you might have another album. I'm not gonna not listen to Beyonce. She makes me proud. She makes me want to be the woman that I can be. She inspires me. I can't lose She's that perfection. inspiration. She is. She's listen, perfection. And Beyonce is so amazing. Let me tell you how amazing Beyonce is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday and everybody was boycotting Super Bowl anybody post something about the NFL some people jumped on your throat with your comments whatever whatever mm-hmm. Beyonce posted Chloe and Halle singing at the Super Bowl y'all ain't take that bullshit to her page no you did it <laughs> no you did not no you did and, not and and the next day or maybe two days after Beyonce was in the skating ring with a Kaepernick jersey on. Mm-hmm. Two things can be true. Mm-hmm. I can yeah. root for I can root for my two people that's performing at the Super Bowl and I can support Cap. And who gonna te- who gonna check me, boo? Yeah. Who? <laughs> Did you hear this? Some, some so website stupid. posted this. I don't know if it it, it could be completely false that she took uh, Jay Z's name off of her last name. 
So now she's not Knowles Carter. Now she's just Knowles. That's not true. That's not true. Okay, she's it was just some Beyonce Knowles Carter. Yeah, I think she'll be the Knowles. Shit, Carter. I'm Charlemagne Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter. <laughs> okay, we ain't getting rid of these last names. <laughs> All okay, right. <laughs> right. It could be right, completely fake. We we right uh, here. We right here. What else you saw this week? What about them Grammys, man? I didn't see them, but I like, didn't watch that shit. How many did Cardi win? I think she just won, won that one. Oh, rap album gonna be like the Cardi Grammys. No, can no. we talk about how? tragic uh, Nicki Minaj's fall from grace has been it's really sad man <laughs> see here's the thing we gotta stop doing. it makes me sad Cardi's wins are not Nicki's losses no Car- Nicki's losses are Nicki's losses this has nothing to do with Cardi I don't think she's losing right now though oh man that's sad I think it's sad that she wants to still remain where she was. Let it go. Let Seasons it change. Yo. Bow out gracefully. That's what the mature do. Uh, and do it where you on high. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You don't want to put a song out and 100 people listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just go ahead on go now. So what's she supposed to do, Kim? She's supposed like you to say bow out, but what is Kim supposed to do? I mean, what is no, supposed no, to do? No, no, no. She's supposed to respect the ebb and flows of career. Like, Nikki's at a place, at least it, I, it seems that she's at a place where she only finds happiness with more and being the top and being the number one. Yeah. She can't look backwards and go, I got millions of fans. I could tour around the world. I have millions of dollars. Right. I have everything I've ever dreamed of. It's she can't look. She needs that. She needs more. She needs to consume, consume, uh-huh. consume. And the second somebody else came up and started popping more than her, which is natural in a career. It's like gonna happen. She got so much talent, right? That she could have a Snoop Dogg level career, right? Snoop Dogg's been at the highest of highs, then come back to the lowest of lows, then you popped back to the highest and highs. Know, but, that, but that's because Snoop remains Snoop at all times. It, so yeah. as long as Nikki, if Nikki embraced Cardi and watched her rise to fame and like was cool with Cardi being number one and her just hanging out, eventually Nikki would have another album that would go back to number one. She'd have another hit. It would be the cycle of a career. I do think it's a little unfair whenever Cardi does win, people automatically jump on Nicki. Nicki like, does it herself. Nicki it, it, said, it, but, the reason well, I haven't won some shit, like, Well, she, no, before that, BET posted some shit like, Cardi won and now Nicki's being dragged by her lace front. I'm like, why y'all even bringing Nicki into this, right? right? And then... Because Nicki puts that energy out there. She Nikki didn't say her, nothing. Nicki was at home. Nikki and her All are she did was like a comment and got a shoe thrown at her. I mean, you can't like a comment? No. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't be petty. Like, support that girl. Why not support like female rap? You can, you can think something is funny and still be supportive. I think, I look at it, I look at Nikki. Nikki's interesting for, because you got to look at her peers, right? Mm-hmm. And when I say her peers, her peers are, you know, to me, it's Lil Wayne and Drake. Because they all came, you know, Drake and Nicki came in at the same time. Yeah. Lil Wayne is a goat, right? But right. Lil Wayne music ain't necessarily, hasn't been hot. You know, in years, like he's and little Wayne, up. and you fuck with Wayne, like okay, Wayne. You know, every now and then he drop a song, you might fuck with it, or whatever, whatever. But he's still Wayne. Mm-hmm. Drake could confuse anybody, which I like, like how Tom Brady is gonna start confusing people, right? Because you, you look at Drake, there's never been a rapper who's been at that level for a decade plus. Yeah, like. Jay is Jay Z, right? Jay's been consistent for twenty plus years, but you can look at different years throughout those twenty plus years and say Jay necessarily may not have been the hottest guy that year. Exactly, he yeah. was there, but he wasn't the hottest guy. Like DMX had a year, yeah. Fifty Cent had a year. You know, even I'm talking about even the Nellies of the world, yeah. Eminem, like all these different people had years. Mm-hmm. Like Drake has been the guy. For damn near a decade. Because he's and, and if he hasn't been, it's been very, very close. Mm. He's the smartest guy in the game. There's no doubt. There's no question whether he of is. Of the new ones, yeah. Of anybody. Not a new ones. Of anyone. Not a new ones. Because a lot of his blueprint is Jay. Well, he just did it better than Jay. Not really. You just said that Jay couldn't do what Drake did. No, I did not say that. You just said that Jay has been ups and downs in those years and that Drake has been consistently on the top. Yeah, Therefore, I, for, Drake for, has for, done for, it better. For a decade. But Jay so, did it for 20 plus years. So but did Jay but, have a decade of dominance like Drake or no? Absolutely. Oh, so then he did. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you said, yeah. okay, but I'm saying, but, I'm, but no, what I mean, when it's, I said. It was confusing what you said there because no. it seemed like you he had ebbs and flows. But yeah. you weren't I mean, saying no, that. Jay's always been You were been saying up. there was a 10 year straight run that Jay had that was akin to yeah, Drake's. Yeah, because Jay, reti- Jay had to retire. Right. You got to think he retired with so the Black Album. So which 10 would you say was his year that was just like Drake's? Because uh, it definitely wasn't Reasonable Doubt to Volume 1. From 98 to... From 98 to probably 07, 08. 98 to 07, 08. Okay. Yeah, from you, 98 to 07, 08. All right, that's cool. So yeah. there's no dips but he, in there. But, he, but see, but this is what I mean by that. Even in those moments, Jay was still Jay, but you still had a 50 cent. Right. You still had a DMX. What Jay would do, which Drake does very well, 
is Jay would be like, okay, we going on tour. Who would he have on tour with him? DMX. Exactly. Who do you have on tour with him? 50 Cent. Exactly. Like he would do that. And what has Drake done with every new pop and artist? That's that's the Jay thing. That's He's not only co-signed them, he found them before the general public and propped them up. And if Nikki took the Drake, but Nikki's not secure enough to do it, right? She's she's so she's so like egomaniac mm -hmm. and she needs and the reason she does she Thanks. needs to fulfill that even look at like the way that she dated like the people she dated are people who are just be obsessed with her like I don't know nothing about do that. you know the you confidence yeah. that you need to be as Jay-Z need to have a Jay-Z to date Beyonce to date someone who's bigger than you to date someone who's more powerful than you speaking that's of, fucking confidence speaking of me and she's dated <laughs> who is that? Safari so and it's like there's me as of my surgery this year <laughs> uh, that's why it's my screensaver, honey. You fuck Safari? No, I'm gonna be fine like that broad. He finna fuck after they get out the pool. Oh, I thought that was you and Safari. <laughs> oh no, no. But no, without without she's what, dating people that are like obsessed with her, right, and like reliant on her because she needs that constant adulation to keep moving on. It's like a lot of artists. She's not different, but she's so wildly talented. She doesn't need that. She's so wildly talented. Like I think just off of raw talent. She should be in the Drake Jay Z combo, but her ego will not allow that. I think her insecurity should be, will not allow that. I think niggas should be looking at Wayne more than she look at Drake. That was my original point. Like Drake is red hot, right? And I know that's your guy. You came in the game with him, but Drake is year after year, year after year, year after year. Wayne is a goat. We recognize him as a goat. We mm -hmm. recognize him for the things that he's done. We still check for him when he drops, but he's Wayne. That's Nikki should be looking at Wayne's model more than Drake because what Drake has done. It's just like that's un it's unbelievable to still have that run where radio still gives a fuck about you, where people still screaming your shit a hundred miles per hour, where people still care when you get on features and shit like that. And Drake has done it with just music. Think about it. Drake has not done anything else yet. No acting yet. Like, I mean, we saw him host the ESPYs and little shit like that, but he hasn't got ventured off into nothing He's else the yet. He's goat, man. I think Nikki should be looking at Wayne more than Drake. I think, I think it might be too late for, for Nikki. <laughs> to, I really do, but like it might have fallen off too much. But I think that if I was Nikki ten years ago, I'm looking for female artists that I could prop up. I'm doing everything I possibly can. I mean, didn't she have a little beef with Kim? You were saying like a she little. Yeah. She, that was a lot of. So just think about the insecurity there. It's like like little Kim is not you know surpassing. Yeah, beef you. with Kim. She had beef with Remy. Every female artist. Come here, Taylor. What are you trying to say? So Boom. So every female artist, <laughs> right? That's fucked up. So it's okay. So right here, right, Taylor? So every female artist, we were talking about this, but it seems like could encroach on her space. She gets oh, yeah. freaked out, right? And then she goes to war with. What does Drake do with every artist that could encroach on his space? Gives him a feature, puts him on the album, props him up. Now Drake is essentially sunning all these artists. They love him. He makes them millions of dollars. They're in bed together. Then they go on tour like Migos and Drake did. I mean, Nicki could do that with every female artist she chooses not to. Well, a lot to of these artists drinking power weren't encroaching on this space, though. Say what? A lot of these guys drinking power weren't encroaching on. This How space. we know? No, Lil Baby's not going to encroach on Drake's space. McConey definitely wasn't encroaching on Drake's space. What about space. Migos? No, they Migos popping. Their group and Drake. If you Drake, what about Future? Drake put Future was popping. Two different lanes, bro. Drake is Drake did exactly what Jay did when Jay Jay would jump on the Hot Boys record. Jay would jump on the dudes from Houston record. Jay would Smart. Re redo something from Oakland, like different lanes. Jay would do a record with Jeezy, do a record with Smart. Rick Ross. Like this is just really keeping your name in the conversation. And Nicki's not. Who is Nicki doing these songs with? Right, especially females. Bring up the females. Empower the females. Don't separate that audience. What she's doing is driving the wedge. Cardi's not driving the wedge. Cardi's not saying you're either a Cardi fan or Nicki fan. Nicki Nikki's saying that. Is she by, saying is she? She's saying no, it by said. trashing these girls. She's by tr by not supporting the other artists. You're separating your the fan base. You're making them make a decision, right? Why do that? Why not uplift? Why not be the person that goes, "Yo, Cardi's so fucking dope. I can't wait to do a song with her." And then all of a sudden, all of Cardi's fans find your music and they realize how fucking dope you are. Because Nikki's dope. Yeah. But that's your. This is you, business. You see how y'all keep comparing it to like with Drake and stuff like that? Like I was telling you before, Nikki is in a male dominated industry. Mm -hmm. Like females, like it's just not. They. 
It's hard to have. I don't know why, but I don't know why we. Because y'all have... fight each other too much. You don't come together. You're not doing features together. You're not. You're not killing it. But like why, you could. Fault is that though? You think you? You, you don't think it's women can't get along? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. When have women got along ever? I'm gonna tell you in why history. I don't, I don't agree yeah. with that. And I'm gonna tell you why I don't agree with that. We just sat here and compared Nikki to all the male rappers. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's how I look, I look at Nikki as a rapper. Yeah, and she's doing it wrong. She's not doing it like her, the successful male rappers. She's acting reality. like a woman about it. Reality what? Reality. Put your lips on the mic, Taylor. That's why you don't got a Valentine. Listen. <sighs> oh. <laughs> crazy. Anyways, going down so, um, now I just lost my answer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Boy, you remind a girl she's going to be single for Valentine's all, and she loses her whole do train that. of thought. Do Tell that. me, what are you doing for Valentine's? What are you doing? I'll be with my wife doing something. Probably nothing, but hey, man, we got each other. <laughs> uh, but uh, we got each other. Listen, the moral of the story is this. Uh, I, 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 I appreciate... I don't, first of all, I don't give a fuck about the Grammys. I look at the Grammys like Gucci. I don't give a shit. Me either. And I hate how everybody acts like they don't give a fuck about the Grammys until the Grammys happen, and then everybody can't stop talking about the fucking Grammys. Can somebody tell me what the Grammys judge? You say what? She's just telling me another topic to talk about. Oh, listen, yeah. I... Uh, tell I'm, me what the G Grammys judge. This is how yeah, fucking yeah. stupid they are. Yeah. Someone tell me yeah. what they judge. It's not talent. Like, listen, we was in the group chat. Is it the amount of, is it the amount of records sold? It gotta be. It gotta be. It ain't. It gotta be. It can't be. No, it gotta be. Because Cardi did not sell more records yeah, than did. some pop band. But no, in that rap album category, she did. I thought she she won best album in general. No, 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 best rap album. So she run the she sold the most records. She sold the most so out why of we even, in that category. So why do we even need Grammys? We already know who won. What's the point? Right. Why? Hey, I can't I don't believe know. I won. Can you not? Did you just look at the numbers? Listen, we was in the group chat, <laughs> right? So uh me, Rob Markman, Hovain, Kaz, we got a group chat, right? And um, yo, they was like, yo, man. Cardi shouldn't know. I like Invasion of Privacy, but it shouldn't have won Best Rap Album. And I said, yes, it should have. It's the Grammys. And and mind you, it was Nipsey Hussle in the category. Pusha T was in the category. Drake was in the category, I believe. I don't know who else. My two favorite rap albums of the year were Nipsey Hussle, Victory Lap, and Pusha T, Daytona. But I like Invasion of Privacy. When Cardi won, I wasn't shocked. It's the fucking Grammys. What does it judge? What do they Probably think it popularity. judges? popularity. I don't know. So it's popularity. Probably record Popular sales, radio to whom? play. To whom? <laughs> I would think mainstream America. Because the people voting on those fucking awards are people who ain't, they not underground hip-hop heads. You know what I'm saying? They probably was like, who is Nipsey Hussle You're again? unpacking it. You know what I mean? Why the fuck do we care about who says that this album is the best if we also know they know nothing about hip-hop? I don't give a shit. I don't. And guess what? I'm happy Cardi won. I'm happy for her. I like Invasion of Privacy. I'm not mad at it. But best rap album at the Grammys? Yes, I can see her winning that. Now, if it was like something I consider more hip-hop, the Source Awards, uh, if Double XL had, well, I don't know, somebody. Yeah, <laughs> Nipsey Hussle would probably win. Yeah, Pusha T would probably win. But it's it's, it's the Grammys. Who Cardi deserved to win that Grammy. about what the Source Awards yeah. and Double XL thinks? Like, this is what I'm trying to say. There's You either got numbers or you don't. Tell me someone's the best rapper in the world. Do people listen? People like validation. Yes or no? They, of course they love validation. Love validation. That's what these things are played off of. Mm -hmm. Like artists in general, we are all so insecure and so validation seeking that you can make us go on national TV and lose an award to people. Like that is crazy <laughs> when you think about it. You better tell me if I'm winning before I get here, motherfucker. I don't blame motherfuckers who say here. that. Well, in this know, Gucci be suit, publicly humiliated. Word up! You got the close up on my face while I'm trying to be happy for someone I fucking hate. Because see, I just called a boycott of Gucci, and it's too late for me to return my suit. <laughs> I've been working on this shit for weeks. I need to know if I'm winning before I come up here and get this slander from Black Twitter. Okay. Black <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's just stupid. Like yeah. what Drake said was so smart and so poignant. I've been saying on this podcast for years. You won if you got fans. I'm shocked Drake even showed up to the awards. Well, he knew he was winning. No, but Drake has, Drake said a long time ago he wasn't showing up to no more awards, and he did not come for years. Maybe he came to shit on it. Maybe Wait. he literally came to give that speech. Well, last year, was it last year when Beyonce or Jay-Z felt they got snubbed and had a look? Jay-Z got snubbed last year. Beyonce got snubbed the year before yeah. that. That is a fact. Uh -huh. Jay-Z got snubbed for album of the year for 444, and Beyonce got snubbed for Lemonade. Uh -huh. And Adele even went on that stage and said it. Like, yo, I don't know how the fuck I won this over Beyonce uh -huh. Lemonade. Oh, I love Adele, though. I love her. I love Beyonce too. I'm just saying. You allowed to love both. I, that's what I, I don't want to get persecuted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Beehive don't bullshit. The Beehive do not bull. They jumped on Lori Harvey ass just because she was smiling at Jay Z. God damn it! Wait, what happened at the Rock Nation brunch, man? 
<laughs> at the fucking Rock Nation brunch, bro. What was she smiling at? She was smiling. She was smiling. I don't know what you was talking about. Yeah, but my thing is, you a little late being that hard on him. He already done got some outside pussy. Exactly. God That's why damn. they upset. He just did. Saying, a little late to the party, baby. He did. Hey, speaking of outside, shout out to everybody who was outside the Rock Nation brunch and couldn't get in. Y'all motherfuckers, speaking of, y'all talk about the Grammys validation? Bro. Boy, niggas love that Rock Nation brunch validation, boy. <laughs> like, was I, Damon Dash there? No, that's why he was crying. That's uh, what that whole apology was about. What is that? You didn't hear Dame Dash apology? You were telling me something like, I'm sorry that we're beefing this. He said, he apologized to Jay-Z. He apologized to Steve Stout. He apologized to Leo Cohen. I respect the apology, though. I respect that. Good for you. I respect it to everybody except for Leo. Why? Why? First of all, I can understand apologizing to Jay. I can understand apologizing to Biggs. Those are your brothers. Y'all came up together. Y'all made a lot of money. I feel like nobody should hold on to any anger, any resentment. Like, he even said that in the video. He was like, I'm not angry no more. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of times, man, you hold on to things and you you you, it, you think you're hating somebody, but you're really just hating yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, that anger and that bitterness, that shit destroys you. Right. So, I don't mind him letting that shit go. But Leo... It was just, they have a, a a different approach to business. You know what I'm saying? Dame didn't like the way Lior did business. He called right. him a culture vulture. You know what I'm saying? He said that he's he's uh, jerked a lot of people. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that opinion. I don't think that's something to apologize for. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The shit with Jay, yeah, you out here trying to imply that... Jay messing with young girls and, you know, one time you was trying to say Jay B with snitches. Like, you just, you was coming at him in a different way. So I can understand the apology. I don't know where the apology came from with Biggs. I don't know that situation. Mm-hmm. But with Leo, y'all just had a fundamental difference of, of business. I don't think that was any reason to apologize. But I'm telling y'all, he was apologizing because he, he saw them pictures from that Rock Nation brunch. Mm. And when you see everybody in that Rock Nation brunch and they linked up and they fake laughing and shit and they toasting, that shit will drive a fake motherfucker laughing. crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they I'm serious. Laughing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They probably do that shit to shit on they, they foes. Yeah. Because they know them videos and shit going to get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Dude, Diddy owned that brunch, bro. Black. I thought it was Diddy's brunch. <laughs> <laughs> That shit right there yeah. will drive a motherfucker crazy. Did you bro. feel bad that you weren't invited? Nah, I never thought about it. Really? Nah. But you would like to invite. You like to just be like, "Hey, man, like Charlie, you want to come?" No, I wouldn't. Really? <laughs> no. You could have gone if you wanted to. I'm sure. I'm sure I could have. Did you get an invite though? No, <laughs> I've never gotten an invite. I've never wanted. Uh, <laughs> you hey, look at all them pictures, though, didn't I mean, you? Listen, man, I, I I can I can say this. No, I don't have to say nothing. I really don't. I mean, I don't. Like, get I, it off your chest, no, Sean. No, I, I, get I, it off your chest. I don't. I don't have. To, I don't. I, don't I have, wear this Rock Nation hat three times a week on Breakfast Club, yeah. and I can't get one brunch invite. Yeah, but, Yo, that's fucked up. But, I wear these uncomfortable ass Pumas every single I love day. Pumas, but, say what? But it's reasons I don't care. <laughs> Paige knows. Hey, so, hey, my thing is this: niggas got to be comfortable. With <laughs> oh, oh, now they, no, <laughs> oh, niggas. Got, that was listen, the word. No, no, now that word coming out. <laughs> no, I see how it is. Listen, niggas got to be. <laughs> niggas got listen. People got to be comfortable with who that they Pumas are. Pumas getting burned tonight. No, people got to be comfortable with who they are. You know why? Because being in the room. Don't mean nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had this dude who was on the show today. His name is Ali Gates. Ali Gates has this uh, this company called Claim It, right? Claim It is this big app online. And he said it. He was like, yo, when I'm in these rooms, I don't want to be in these rooms. He said, I don't, I don't want to take pictures with people. Mm-hmm. He said, if I'm in these rooms, I want to network. Mm-hmm. I want to do some business. That's what it's about to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I saw Kevin Hart do the toast, and he was like, if you in this room, then that means, you know, you are somebody or, you know, uh, you, you, you can Hart make it. Or I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not true. Right. Somebody came in here with somebody. Right. Oh, it's <laughs> a lot of plus ones. A lot of plus uh, ones. A lot of plus ones okay. at the Rock Nation brunch. And they may be going back to their <laughs> job on Monday. Oh, absolutely. Like, like So that means nothing. And just for the record, there's one thing I want to get off my chest. Uh-oh. And people are going to say I'm hating. All right, go. Salute to my guy, Rory. All right. Yeah. Couple, <laughs> couple things. <man>. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's my guy. I fuck with Rory. Rory, you know I fuck with you. There's no hate whatsoever. Okay. I saw Kaz and I saw everybody else from Duce Palooza, low key. Uh, they, was, they, was at, they was at Roscoe's. Roscoe's. Because they couldn't get into the brunch. Right. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I was told that they got to the door 
and they only let two people from Duce Palooza in. It was Rory and Cam, right? Rory and Cam, y'all supposed to roll with the team, bro. That's how Theo and Cockroach fell out, okay? Yeah. You, you're not supposed to go in. If they don't let all of y'all in, then you, no, nobody's supposed to go in. Yeah. Not only did Rory go in, Rory proposed at the Rock Nation brunch. Rory, I don't ever want to hear you say you anti-industry. I don't want to hear that fake, I'm not an industry person. Type. There is nothing more industry than proposing at the Rock Nation fucking brunch, bro. You had to ask Jay-Z for permission like Jay-Z is your woman's daddy. <laughs> okay. To propose to her at the Rock Nation brunch. Yo, if that was anybody else, they would be killing. If Joe would be killing anybody else for doing some shit like that. And maybe he does on the podcast this week. I don't know. That shit, I'm not proposing to my girl at the Rock Nation brunch, right. bro. You propose somewhere where you may, where you know you can go back to. Rory, you may not get an invite next year. <laughs> All right? You know what I'm saying? I proposed on the island of Anguilla. Yeah. I go to Anguilla like twice a year. That place means something. Right. I can I can take my daughter and say, y'all proposed to your mom right there. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Your daughter ain't, I know your children ain't going to the Rock Nation brunch. Okay. <laughs> All right? When, when y'all have kids, them kids ain't going to be at the Rock Nation brunch. Blue Ivy, them in the future, is not inviting Rory's kids to the Rock Nation brunch. All right? That's so, a donkey of the day. That's all I'm saying. Like, that shit was wild to me, bro. Oh, God. You proposed at the Rock Nation brunch. Did she say yes? Yes. I'm not gonna say no in front of Beyonce. <laughs> Probably why Rory did it then. Maybe that's why he did it. He's like, listen, this chick is not saying no here. Right. You're not gonna embarrass me in front of Jay Z. Right. Bro. Bro. I just wanted to get that off my chest. I'm sorry, Rory. Yeah. Don't take that the wrong way. Mm. It's okay. Don't take it the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> Yo, congratulations, Rory. Congratulations. For being I should have started with congratulations. Yeah, I think right? you started. Yeah, yeah, I should. I'm sorry. You said, hey, congratulations. Congratulations. Look Rory. forward to your new life. This is a beautiful thing. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. What you wanna talk about, Kim? You, 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 you're yeah. stewing over there. What's up? I'm just thinking about all the things that Yo, are being brought to the table. Do you okay. think that? Do you think that like they were just gonna let Rory in, and then he was like, "Nah, I need someone to videotape the proposal." <laughs> 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 Who got the steadiest hands? Can't, come on, come on, get this shit. <laughs> Yo, salute to B Dot. B Dot couldn't get in either, man. B Dot works that title, bro. B-Dot. What's the point of working there if you can't get in, yo? <laughs> if the Duce guys can't get in. Whoa. What's the point? Hey, man, salute to B Dot, man. B Dot was very upset in the group text. <laughs> All right? He yeah. was very upset. B Dot always upset, though. Bro, I was in the gym <laughs> dying laughing at B Dot. <laughs> B Dot was like, yo, and I was with my girl. Was Elliot allowed in? <laughs> I don't know if Elliot was there. B Dot said Jada Kids pulled up on a golf cart, told him jump on. The guy that wouldn't let B Dot in said, no, that's not gonna work. Okay? That's that's what we need at the border. Rock Nation. Uh, the people, the people, the, the people, the people who won't let you in the Rock Nation brunch, that's who needs to be at the fucking border. Oh, Fuck the wall, bro. We need Spend a, a few Rock million Nation dollars and get the border. Rock Nation security for the border, wow. bro. Okay. That shit, man. Hey man. But no disrespect. You know but they're gonna be back to at work, nobody. right? They're gonna be back who? at work at title this week. Of course. They're gonna be back to the interviews. Cool. You send a couple emails out complaining. You know what I'm saying? But then you just write back to the motherfuckers. Back like, to ah, business, whatever, and then maybe all. next year you got it. Maybe next year. That's the bat. That's the Yo, fucked up shit about maybe it. Maybe next year you got that shit, bro. Who? No, I'm just saying. Oh, everybody. Well, you also. But no. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten Yo. people in the brunch if it means anything. Say what? I've gotten people in the brunch. Really? Yeah, I've gotten people in the brunch. Who'd you get in? I'm not saying. You can't tell me who you got in. I'm not doing that. Just give me one person <laughs> that you got no. in. It's only it's only fun. <laughs> it's only fun for the people who didn't get in. People who are in the brunch, cool, salute to y'all, you know what I'm saying, do a toast. The only thing, I don't like the pictures when you see like 30 people. Yeah. And you can tell like that one person who's just... It's just lurking. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you're straight, like, yeah, 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 yeah. He got the hors d'oeuvres on a platter, but it's oh, out the frame. Oh my God, yeah. I hate that shit, man. Yeah. But well, shout out to Rory, though. So that's the spot, man. That That is the real... That's the real Grammys. Grammy weekend... It's all about the rock. It's all nation about the rock. Did brunch. you get a rock nation brunch invite, bro? Wow. They, they, them motherfuckers take that shit serious. Where is it? I have no idea. I know it was in New York last year. It's somewhere in LA? It oh, was, it changes destination. Well, it's, it's, it depends the where the Grammys, Grammys are. Gotcha. Yeah. That's LA, right? Yeah, that was yeah. in LA. And why is it so uh, popular? It's just because you get to take a picture with Jay Z? <laughs> I think it's Instagram. So it's a, I don't it's a, I don't I don't know how it was before Instagram, but I really yeah. think it's because of Instagram because it looks like everybody in the industry is there. 
You right. know what I'm saying? And it's that fucking group photo, man. That group photo, it's like, yo, I want to be in this room. I want to be in this space. Like, yo. It pe- feels like a Ciroc commercial. Bro, people. Oh, that's a fact. <laughs> Don't it? Yeah. Remember them Ciroc commercials that. where they're yeah. walking in Vegas like the Rat Pack? Yeah. Like, that's what it felt like the whole time. Bro, people were posting pictures. Yeah. Or posting videos of the toast. That Kevin Hart and Meek Mill gave him. It was like, yo, yeah, if this shit it. don't inspire you. Something wrong with you. I was yeah. like, well, something wrong with me then. Right. Because <laughs> I'm, like, like, I'm like, I wasn't inspired. Right. Like, I, I fuck with all of those guys and yeah. I appreciate them inspired. and I respect them. I wasn't inspired. Right. Like, it's a Barack brunch with inspires. no food. Barack inspired. They don't have food? I have never seen no food at the brunch. Have you been to the brunch before? Never been to the brunch. And you don't want to just go to like experience it? No. Get, get me in next year and I come back with a show no for one more. <laughs> <laughs> Trust. I'll even see who dig me. Listen, I'm just not. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not the listen, table. Up on the table. I would never sit here and say I wouldn't, I wouldn't go. Right. But it's not like. A th- like I'm not about to stand outside with my girl <laughs> and get embarrassed. No, that's, right? that's foul. Like no, for way ain't that serious to me. You know what I'm saying? Like no, it's a brunch, and I'm damn sure not about to go there to propose. You know how much that shit must mean to you as a person if you was like, this is where I want to propose. Right. right. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> like, Lame. and yo, I'm gonna tell you one more thing, bro. Are you Just sure one more he thing. proposed at the Rock Nation? Brunch? It was on video. Show me this video. One more thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, one more thing, and I'm gonna leave Rory to fuck alone. All right. Show me this video. One more There's thing. No way. One, There's no way. One more thing, and I'm gonna leave Rory alone. Rory, you know, if you was gonna propose at a public event, it should have been Duce Palooza, bro. Duce Palooza has done more for you than the Rock Nation brunch ever has. In fact, before there was a Duce Palooza, it was a Henny Palooza because yeah. y'all had the Palooza popping so much that Rock Nation and them had to come to y'all and say, yo, let's do a Duce Palooza. Word. You should, yo, bro, not only did you leave your homies, <laughs> all right? Not cockroach. I mean, yeah, cockroach. Listen, not only did you leave Theo, all right? You gave the Rock Nation people a moment that you should have gave to your own people, people. at Duce Palooza. You propose that Duce Palooza has changed your life in a lot of ways, bro. Right, right, right. Like, come on. You got to stay on brand, Rory. Hold on. Here's the proposal. This is sweet, man. This is kind of... It is sweet because it's a proposal. But it's at the Rock Nation branch. I had no yeah. clue. Oh, my Lord. This is... These are interesting slippers. Should have been at Duce Palooza, man. <laughs> I wouldn't wear those slippers on the grass. It's kind of... <laughs> it should have been at Duce Palooza, Rory. Rory, I know you had to ask Jay-Z permission to do that, too, man. Of course. Oh, this is sweet. She's so happy, though. I kind of like looking at it. She, she wouldn't give a fuck where she is. She's a woman getting proposed to. Yeah, but at the brunch, she's more... She, Rory get cares more about that brunch than she does. <laughs> but how old is she? She don't give she, a fuck about that like, goddamn brunch. Yo, what if that was the only way he could get her in? Yo, Cass. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, I just thought about something. No, I think hold on. that's it. Hold on. He's like, hold yo, on. I need to get my girl in. <laughs> and they're like, no way. And they're like, nah, nah, I'm going to propose to her. That's, the, that's how you get your girl into the Rock Nation. That's how you get a plus two. I just thought about yeah. something. So... Low key wasn't in the brunch. Kaz wasn't in the brunch. It was a few of them from Duce Palooza. This is sweet. Though. Cam, they say Cam and Rory Maybe got I'm in. A sucker for these. But Rory had to Rory. get in with a plus one. Rory had to get in with the plus one. Yes. Sh- Should have been lower, Chris. Rory. Hate to cause division amongst the Duce Palooza guys, but there's no way your girl could wait, bro. Your girl. What if he? Chris heard- and Low are the ones who built Duce Palooza. How the Palooza? How are they not in the brunch? What if he had already proposed to her earlier and this was all farce just to get her in? Rory proposed to his girl at the brunch because he didn't Two want the rest ago. of the Duce Palooza people to be mad at him. That's the only way you're not mad at Rory. Because he proposed to his girl. <laughs> if he had just went there to go, it'd be consequences and repercussions on uh, the following On the crew. The next day. Absolutely. Really? But Rory, you my guy. Congratulations, man. I don't want to... <laughs> I want you to think for one second. I don't want nobody to think for one second this is slander. Right. This is just something I had to get off my chest because I was thinking about it all week long. It was bothering you. It was definitely bothering me. You know who else was probably bothering? What? Those guys eating at Roscoe's. That <laughs> <laughs> Call Cass right now. <laughs> call Cass. <laughs> call Cass, Schultz. Okay. Can we call Cass from this phone? I'll call him right call now. Call Cass, man. Call Kaz. I just need to know if, if this is bothering. Kaz is our guy. Call. I just need to know if this is bothering Kaz at all. All right? Because that bothered me for Kaz if it's not bothering Kaz. Mm-hmm. Kaz said that? No. Rory said that? What, on the podcast? 
I, there's no way I would admit that. Rory admitted that he asked Jay Z <laughs> for permission to propose. Jay Z is not your girl's daddy, Rory. Jay Z, wow. what the fuck, man? My God, <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> bro, yeah, can so, you imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, man, <laughs> just, what just, the fuck, your dad, bro? Your dad on one knee is looking at you. Sure, it's cool. Jack, can I ask my girl? Can I ask my girl? Can I propose? Yeah, was that cool? All right, cool. <laughs> Kaz. <laughs> Kaz. <laughs> Wait a minute. He got an ass. <laughs> Cass. No, it's, it's, it's ringing, son. Oh. It's ringing. Y'all thought that was Cass's voice? <laughs> this guy never made a phone call. Uh, hello? <laughs> Cass ain't even got no fucking job no more. <laughs> still leaving voice messages. I assume this is important. How do we hang on? You. Who the fuck still has a fucking <laughs> voicemail, voice answering machine? <laughs> He sound unemployed in that. <laughs> <laughs> when he was working at WWE, was all chipper. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sound like Eeyore, right? Hey, guys. I just want to know, man. Um, okay, fuck it. I'm going to call him again. We're going to get God bless call. everybody at the uh, Rock Nation brunch. Um, did, anybody did, you, else did, see, did, huh? did anybody else propose at the Rock Nation brunch? No. <laughs> did you see Kamala Harris on The Breakfast Club? Okay, so this is an interesting story because this is a perfect example of like people jumping on... So Kamala comes on Breakfast Club and yes. she talks about uh, smoking weed and she also talked about uh, what music she was listening to, what music she smokes. She smoked weed to. No, she never did that. Oh, uh, that that's the perception. Yes. And conservative Twitter, the conservative Twitter that talks about fake news all the time, yeah. the conservative Twitter that talks about the media bias and how they're not telling you what's real and what's really going on, yeah. jumps on this story where they conflate two questions Yes, and create this narrative that Kamala Harris was just saying she smoked weed in college while listening to Snoop Dogg. So that she could look cool and win over Breakfast Club listeners. Yes. When, in fact, Charlemagne, what really happened? Well, she graduated law school in 89. Right. Like, Snoop didn't come out to, like, 91. Pac might have came out later. I don't know who was first, but it, was, it wasn't with the time she was in college. But I was tripping off this because I saw Fox News put this story out. Well, you sent me the tweet first of the guy. I forgot the dude's name. Oh, yeah. That's so fu These uh, other guy writes for a reason. Nick Gillespie. And I wanted to get him on here because... He's one of these guys that like is kind of like a gotcha journalist. Like, yeah. here are the real facts. Let me tell you what's really going on. Yeah. Like, you guys are idiots. You're blinded by all this other stuff. I got you with the real truth. And you fucking dummy. You didn't even listen to the interview. So, But the interview, there are two questions going on at the same time. We talked about, because last time she was on Breakfast Club, she talked about how she wanted to legalize marijuana. Right. But for whatever reason online, there's all of these different, you know, quotes about, oh, how she's opposed marijuana legalization. I was like, well, wait a minute. I've heard her say she wants to legalize it. So I bought it back up. She's talking about, no, I do want to legalize marijuana, but it should be these stipulations. Like, she's worried about regular shit, like people smoking and driving and mm. like, like just things like that. Like, she's it's regular, like, but she wants it to be legalized for the most part. Right. Then, uh, I don't even know how we got on the subject. I'm like, yo, have you ever smoked? She's like, yeah, in college. Mm, that's you know what I'm saying? It. Like, yo, you blunt a joint. Joint. Oh, okay. Like, so you, like, she's like, she's like I'm Jamaican. Like, you know, weed brings joy. Boom, on to another thing. Ten minutes later, Andrew ask her, what music do you like? I'm just on the cut. I just, it was a throwaway line. What music did you smoke to, though? She laughs at me, answers Envy. Right, so people take that part of the interview, yes. and they assume that she's answering your question instead of Envy's question. I'm just on the side talking shit. Like, it was, it was a throwaway line. Like, it was a, right. it was, it was a it was humor. Like, right. like, Envy was like, what music do you like? She's about to answer I'm like, what music did you get hired to? And he's right. like, Snoop. She's like, huh, Snoop. Yeah, I listen to Snoop, Tupac. Like, and I uh, like Cardi B. Like, it was quick. Right. They took that shit and made it gotcha seem journalism. like she said I was smoking weed in college to Tupac and Snoop. That never fucking happened. Only person I saw get it right was the Huffington Post. Right. Mm. Huffington Post is the only person that got it right. And they said this is some shit started by Fox and Breitbart News. They Huffington Post called it exactly for what it was. They was like, Envy asked the question. Right. Charlemagne made a joke. Kamala laughed Charlemagne off. Answered Envy's question. Yeah. This isn't rocket science, people. Hold on. That's Cass? Yes, sir. Yo, Cass, hold, hold on. on. Hold on, hold on, <laughs> Yo, yo, Cass. Cass, <laughs> we're going to call you on another Kaz. line. Cass, Kaz, Kaz, pick up. Cass, we're going to call you from the from the, from the the line, all right? Cass, pick up, goddammit. All right. 
Yo. Kaz, what's up, my brother? Peace. Hey, what's going on, bro? We're here on the Brand Idiots. It's Andrew Schultz, of course. Charlamagne the God. We got Cadillac Kimberly. Cadillac Kimberly, say hi to Kaz. Hi, Kaz. Praise the Lord. You might want to fuck Kaz if you see I him. I might. He sounds like it. Yeah. Who, who is this? Who is this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't sit your thirsty Nigerian ass down. Who is this? Who is this? Nigerian? K yeah, you Nigerian. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kaz, we got a question yeah. for you. Okay. Okay. Who from Duce Palooza got into the Rock Nation brunch? Wait, what happened? <laughs> Who from the Duce Palooza crew got into the Rock Nation brunch? Who got in? Uh, Rory, Cam, Raven. That's about it. Okay, Ravy, Raven works for uh, Beyonce and Jay. Salute to Ravy B. She's doing yeah. her thing. Who yeah. didn't get in? I saw all y'all at Roscoe's. I could only see you and Lowe. And... <laughs> Who was at Roscoe's? Oh, yeah, it's not me, Lowe, Chris. Uh, actually, I got, I got Chris Styles with me right here, actually. My God, oh shit, it gets better. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> what up, Chris? Hold on, hold on. Chris, hold on. how you doing, my brother? Hold on, hold on, man, hold on. Hey, yo, Chris, hey, Chris, come here for a second, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I got, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got Solomon on the line, called from uh, Brilliant Idiot. Yo, what's going on, y'all? I thought I was going to get on this show. Bro, let's not listen. You're live, bro. It's recorded. It's recorded. Uh, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Chris, what's good, my brother? How are you? <laughs> Yo, bro. Chris, listen. Chris, first of all, uh, salute to you for, for the brand that you've built, man. You know what I'm saying? That means a lot to me, bro. I'm just trying to figure out why the fuck weren't you in the brunch and why was Rory and Cam in the brunch but not you? So you see what happened was <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I came to LA for the brunch. I didn't I didn't want to do anything else in LA but go to that brunch. And like, um can I say what happened? Yes, yes. Chris, please. All the podcasts were go for it, dude. Bro, you know, dude, that rock goes. Did you talk about the Rock Nation, Rock Nation brunch? <laughs> so everybody was like, "Yeah, I got the email. I got the email. I got the email. Everybody got the email." So I'm like, "All right." They're like, "Yo, hang tight. You gonna get the email?" <laughs> so I'm like, "Waiting for this email. Waiting for this email." Bro, no email. So Never like, got the email. Right, how how am I gonna get in? It's like, yo. All right, we're going to think about, like, a finesse. I said, we're not finessing the Rock Nation brunch. Yeah, nigga, that's, is, that's not a place you want to finesse. Nigga, this ain't Terminal 5. Like, this shit is, like, heavily guarded and shit like that. And y'all do say Palooza. Do say is Jay-Z, Rock Nation affiliated. Like, that should be bro, easy. Bro, you get preaching to the bro, choir, bro. Bro, <laughs> I'm still not talking to nobody after that. <laughs> <laughs> you thinking about another Palooza? <laughs> friends right now. <laughs> so, hold on. How did Rory and Cam get in? Because this is what I heard. I don't know this is true. I heard all of y'all got to the door. It was on some Theo and Cockroach shit. And, and, and y'all was going back and forth. Of course, Chris should be in there. I think Chris, you, you should have been the first person up. If bro. anybody should have been in there, it should have been you. And then low. Bro. And then low. Bro. Right? I, lit I literally lost friends over this shit. Like, it's still a, <laughs> it's still a sensitive topic right now. Yeah, like, it is still very sensitive around, around the Palooza Nobody's group. answering the question, how the yeah, fuck did Rory get in? <laughs> a lot of side eyes going on. <laughs> Chris and Kaz, how did Rory get in? Bro, bro, bro Rory, Rory had a plan, bro. Like, he was going to pr propose and shit. Like, I wasn't going to, nobody's getting in the way of that. I'm, I'm blaming uh, White Privilege and Joe Button. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, let me ask you, I'm, I, want, I want you to answer. <laughs> Chris and Kaz, answer me this question, and I want y'all to be honest. Proposing at the I mean, Rock Nation up? brunch I, I is OD corny. You, you said, was it corny? It's proposing at the Rock Nation brunch corny. Nah, that's not corny, bro. That's not corny, man. Chris? If you know what I'm saying, Sam's a great girl. Sam's like a huge, like, Beyonce fan. And, like, you got the blessing from Hove to do it. Like, Hove is not her daddy. You asked the father to propose to the <laughs> it wife. Wasn't, it wasn't in the brunch. Yeah, that's true. It yeah. Wasn't, it wasn't yeah, like, in the brunch. Like, I don't want you. Oh, oh, hey. oh, yeah. oh, hey. oh, wait a minute. Uh -huh. So Rory's acting like he proposed at the brunch it and it wasn't in the brunch? <laughs> yo, we doing something here. Hello. Yeah, yo. Hello. <laughs> yeah, we have BuzzFeed right now. We're doing our hell up We don't care. Yeah. Didn't they get fired? Chris. Yo. Where Chris at? Chris. <laughs> Chris. Yo. 
te- technically he didn't he didn't he, he wasn't like in front of like Jay and was like, Hey, I'm about to propose. Like they did it like outside. It was like a, it was a special moment, man. Don't hate on that. Oh, so he asked Jay to propose at the brunch and Jay said, Nah, do it outside. <laughs> Yeah, he, it wasn't inside. inside. Got like, you. Okay. okay, now, all right. This is, all right. Well, listen, we got we to go take this, this thing for Buzz for you, bro. But all we right, Chris and Cass. Right. We're going to have a real conversation soon. Y'all got to come to the Breakfast Club, man. Hey, let, hey, we'll be there, bro. Let us know. All right, peace. All right, later. All right, we got the real story. Okay, now it makes total sense. Rory asked Jay to do it at the brunch. Jay said, no, do it outside. <laughs> okay, now I take it all back, Rory. <laughs> I, take you, I take it all back. You just wanted the setting of the hills and the shit like that. Okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He Wait, did say it was at the brunch, though. Why do you take it back? What's the difference? I'm not taking it back. <laughs> you just took it I'm back. I'm just doing that for bullshit. That's a pilot oh. ticket. I, everybody, I just wanted everybody to hear that. I just want to congratulate Rory and his fiance. Congratulations, Rory. Congratulations. And now it makes sense. Your woman's a Beyonce fan. I understand why you So this would... is something you're doing more for your girl yeah. than it is for you. I think that's a pretty sweet thing. And doing it out. Day, what kind of cool points did he get, though? You know what I'm saying? That's major. Yeah. How you, do we know the girl got in the brunch? We don't even know she got in the brunch. No, no, I think she didn't. I think he proposed and then she went to the Roscoe's. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Kamala. Yes, Kamala. What do you think? Uh, what do I think? I think there's a lot of hate on the page, and I'm curious your thoughts about that. She doesn't seem to have a lot of support. Well, she used to be a prosecutor. So when you used to be a prosecutor, black people are not going to like you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And she liked that white dick. <laughs> she might be the next president. I don't know if you want to say things like that. What's, well, it's wrong. Did I say something not factual? Hey, Kamala, get your ass locked up. All right. <laughs> yeah, right? Kamala. We know for a fact she likes the not white dick. Not for weed. She married the white man. Oh, yeah, is yeah, she? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she married the white man. Nothing wrong with some white dick. I got white dick. Hey, man. I, I What's fuck, wrong with white hey, dick? Hey, salute to Kamala Harris. Real talk. What's wrong with white dick? Way, why, are we, why are we shaming white dick? What? It says pink. What, my dick? <laughs> I'm not going my dick got a couple colors on it <laughs> just one color you know what I mean watch this multi <laughs> they really don't like her because she's a prosecutor huh that's why they really don't like her yeah yeah. and I think a lot of people really did not know much about her prior right. to her announcing her, her, her candidacy for president and I think once she announced People were just ready. Like you got the bots, you got the right. the, the, the the detractors. Like they just was on it early. You know what I'm saying? And and just like with this Fox News thing, you start throwing a couple of fake headlines out there. People run with it. They don't check the motherfucking facts. Not at all. If you, you know? want a hater, here's turnout. a justification. Got I, listen, I, hey man, I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, sold on anybody for 2020 yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do like Kamala Harris a lot, and I'm voting my interest in 2020. Ooh, what does that mean? My interest. My interest are black black people, though. Okay. So what That's if Trump was like, yo, we're going to do all this shit for black people? Depends what it is. It's what if it's sense, all man. the shit? What if it's like, yo, we're doing all the shit for black Everything black people want. <laughs> Everybody's into Rock Nation. Oh. <laughs> Like, that's it. Everybody allowed in. Listen, we're going to make security strong at the border. We're going to make security weak at the We're going to make it weak at the Rock Nation brunch. Son, if <laughs> Trump runs on the campaign of everybody's invited to the Rock Nation brunch, all black people are in. Let's be honest. No. <laughs> no? Nah? No. Let's be honest. No, but if he does some shit like reparations... Yeah. Is there reparations for not getting into the black to the Rock Nation brunch? Yeah, Roscoe. <laughs> <laughs> what if Jay-Z just picked up B Dot's tab? I love the fact that Jay-Z told Rory no outside. <laughs> Can't do it in here. <laughs> Go do that shit. Wasn't outside. the whole thing outside? It looked like all the pictures were outside. Exactly. I I, you already outside and I tell you to go outside? Further what outside? The fuck? Go into the water. <laughs> they were <laughs> almost in the lake. <laughs> you have to be three feet from the lake. <laughs> Let's pay some bills, man. <laughs> okay. Hey, do that. I got to pee. All right. This podcast has been brought to you by Duce Palooza. <laughs> <laughs> you so stupid. <laughs> no, uh, this podcast is brought to you by Mercari. Prefer to sell items. Okay, let me tell you something. If you got things that you're trying to sell, you got junk things that you think are secondhand I'm talking about like toys from when you're a kid. Maybe they got value. Maybe you got some old transformers. Okay. Maybe you got some furniture. You're moving. You're trying to get rid of a bed. You're trying to get rid of a sofa. You're trying to get rid of a table, this type of stuff. If you just got things lying around the house that you don't use, 
Shit, it could be a pair of jeans you only wore once, an old phone. Listen, these iPhones can get some money. These old shits, they use it for parts, etc. Mercari is an app that you can sell all this stuff, okay? They make it fast and easy to sell almost anything. You just got to take a few pics of these things uh, and then just write a description. Boom, your item is listed. Once it's sold, Mercari emails you a shipping label, and then you just send it off. They send you the label. How about that? You don't even have to go to the post office. No meetups with strangers, no hassles, no nothing. I always see people in Starbucks when they're doing their uh, little, uh, what's it called? The other the other uh, merchant exchange sites, which I won't say their name. But with Mercari, you can sell everything from fashion to electronics, toys, sporting goods. 100,000 items get listed on Mercari every single day. You can earn a few extra dollars. Clear up, clear up valuable space in your home with Mercari. The app has over 300,000 reviews on the App Store with an average of 4.8 star rating. Okay? So just give it a try. This is what Gary Vee says every single day. Sell your old shit. Don't let that stuff that you think is useless go to waste all right make some money off of it sell it ship it get paid with mercari you can find mercari on the app store or go to mercari.com that's m-e-r-c-a-r-i mercari the selling app let's get back to the show kim you got in a car accident on the way here well, I had a little something, but I refuse to give you any more life than what happened already. It's under my foot. I got on top of it and looked down on it. And with all that went on, I still got here in the time that I did. Mm, there you go. Because I don't major in the minor. I said, uh-uh. It's all about how you respond to whatever. Don't major in the minors, baby. I agree. That's what my homegirl, uh, my vet Brittle, always says. She says, don't major in the motherfucking minors. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, we do that way too much. We give the little things in our life so much motherfucking attention for no goddamn reason. You know, I asked my therapist, one who I told you I think probably think I'm a lesbian because I sent her so many flowers from Carruthers because she really helped me get my shit together. Yeah. She really helped me get my shit together. And it was because of Phaedra that I even went to her because I was so anti. You know, I was like, ain't Phaedra no Parks? With, yeah. I was like, I'm not crazy. Ain't I always equated it with something being wrong with me. But she really, really helped me get my shit together. And like girlfriend over there, I forgot my thought. <laughs> 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 what else we got on the docket, man? Uh, J-Lo. Oh, yeah. Shout out to J-Lo with the um I didn't Motown. see that shit. Oh, yeah. She's saying the black music. But why? I, I'm, I'm confused. So why would they? <laughs> I'm just so confused with everything. So did, we just can't get black shit right. We no. <laughs> America. just can't get hey, black shit right. Bro, it's what is hey, the fucking I'm gonna Man, like let me tell you something. You just now, you don't even realize it. You just wrote. Yeah. If somebody wanted to challenge Donald Trump, right? Yeah. A Republican. Yeah. That is how they should run. How? We just can't get black shit right. All right? Mm -hmm. Yo, whoever says that, I, any candidate, Democrat or Republican, if you was to come out, because if you, like I asked Cory Agenda, what's the black agenda? Cory Booker, he hit you Corey with the, Booker, yeah. he hit you with the, you know, rising tide, lifts all boats, shit, whatever, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruh, if somebody just says, look man, America has not gotten black shit right. Yeah. We want to get black shit right. You wouldn't, even have, you wouldn't even have to say what the black shit is. Nah. <laughs> All right? Yeah, we just need to get they black would shit understand. right. understand. Real talk. We just got to get black shit right. Yeah. That's just that simple. But why is it so hard to get black shit right? Like, why Why do they think, do the Grammys think Jay-Z, uh, sorry, not Jay-Z, uh, J-Lo is black? I don't. I didn't see it. I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. I heard about it, but I didn't. She I, did the Motown yeah. celebration. I saw Diana Ross perform wasn't she like a guest in it? She was a guest in it. Like, why isn't a she black is chick or black dude doing the black music label celebration? Well, Dan Ross had just turned 75. Seven, no, no, she don't turn 75 until March. I'm pretty sure there's some black people but that can I, sing that are younger than that. Twitter, that's the reason why she was doing that, something. Yeah, that's why I didn't understand. It was like she's celebrating her birthday. I'm like, her birthday's in March. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know why they didn't. But they had more than just J-Lo, didn't they? Yeah, but she was the centerpiece of it. And they had other people that were guests. What song did she do? Uh, Jenny from the block. I, I have no clue. I, I have no clue. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't watch it. I didn't, I didn't watch see it. it either. I just I don't mean, understand. I was supporting. I stand with Cap. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't, I don't. I really don't even know what the fuck people are mad about. I didn't see it, so I don't know. I can't. I have no opinion on it. Just, look, if there was a tribute to uh, kung fu films, right, mm -hmm. and then it was done by Chuck Norris. Wouldn't there be a little bit of an issue about that, don't you think? Listen, man, y'all let Jennifer Lopez say nigga years ago. So why the fuck she can't perform at the Bowtown 25 special? Ooh. And, and did by she the, say nigga? I mean, y'all let she Fat did. Joe say it. 
Well, they done wrestled with. You uh, never say anything when Fat Joe says it. But what about when. Uh, I don't care if she said it. That's what I'm saying. Oh. G- Jennifer Lopez said it. Didn't she say nigga? Yeah, in the, yeah. In the Ja Rule song. So if I said nigga at some point in my life, and it was a little bit of controversy over it, nothing crazy, but if I said it and y'all accepted it, why wouldn't I think I could perform at the Motown 25 special? And she was raised in the Bronx. She is a Spanish woman. Like, but she's not Motown. Ain't none of y'all Motown. <laughs> <laughs> like, well then get someone from Motown <laughs> Who's from Motown? Motown? Detroit Gladys Knight is smoke, but Gladys Get Gladys Eminem Knight. to do it <laughs> Gladys Knight didn't do it? Do what? Performing the Motown special I didn't watch it I wish I could see the clips Of the, of the good posts I, don't, I can't see I didn't see it either I don't even like know that. why y'all even started talking about Jennifer Lopez from, People were upset about it Who was upset? When Baker tweeted uh, she, she quoted the tweet and said shaking my head Anita Who Baker? Did that? Anita. Oh, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. Anita Baker ain't even got no goddamn Twitter. Oh, my goodness. I got to stop with this fake Maybe it her. Yeah, it might not have been her. What's Smokey Robinson say? He won't, he won't fuck? Uh. What's Smokey say? <laughs> What's Smokey say? I know Smokey says some wild shit. He a wild boy. He's he a wild park. boy. Yeah, he's he wild, wild boy. Smokey, wild boy. What do you say? Shouts to Duval. Don't call yourself a Motown lover if you're a hater and spraying the same bigotry that you so strongly oppose coming at. You from others. J-Lo was great, and we we at Motown love her. This song got nothing to do with Motown. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? He showed you dick, Craig? We just read Smokey, Brandon. Oh, I don't even talk about See, this is how we know we don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think we done for the day. Y'all good? Say what? Y'all good? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I just don't care about the Grammys. I think the whole I, thing is stupid. I, I, don't I think give all a shit either. I don't, give, I don't give a flying fuck. I think we covered everything we need to cover. Cat, like, you got anything left? I ain't got nothing left. Except I heard. What happened, what happened with, with Takashi? Uh, he's confirmed he's snitching? he paid an associate 10K to shoot at Chief Takashi telling on everybody. We knew that already. That ain't no goddamn news. El Chapo <laughs> Takashi told on El Chapo. He was the fucking, he was he the reason they found him fucking guilty immediately. <laughs> oh yeah, 21. What y'all thought 21 was gonna be in jail forever? Didn't Jay-Z well, come Jay-Z and pull a Kim Kardashian? Jay-Z Jay-Z came in, Jay-Z, listen, Jay-Z came in yeah. and hired his attorney team. And that's what he did with Meek Mill too. That's what he did with Meek Mill. Really? Spent, spent, yeah, he spent millions of dollars on Meek Mill. Uh Michael Rubin said that between him and Jay, they spent six million dollars on uh Meek Mill's situation. And um, Lil Wayne said Jay-Z paid his taxes. Um, He hired 21. Uh, uh, that's, man, that's who Jay is. Right. Like, that's who Jay is. You wonder why somebody's, you know, so blessed in their life is because he's a, a giver. You know what I'm saying? He's a public servant. He yeah. feels like he's here to serve the needs of the public. And it's good that hip-hop has an elder statement, statesman like that. Hip-hop has an OG like that. You know what I'm saying? That gives a fuck. Right. You know what I mean? Because think about how... All of these artists got raped back in the days, in the 80s, you know what I'm saying? In the 90s, they didn't have those OG executives, power players right. that could take care of shit like that. Jay-Z has the, the financial resources and just the resources, period, with his connections to make shit happen. Mm-hmm. And, and he uses them well. So you got to salute the hove on that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But I'm going to be honest with you. Out of all of the gangster shit we just said Hove did, nothing more gangster than telling Rory to take that shit outside when we already outside. All right, take your little proposal outside and we already out motherfucking side. Okay? Make sure the camera faces the water, Make sure not the, the camera brunch. facing the water. If, 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 show nobody if where Beyonce you at. Beyonce is in this video at all. It's a problem. It's going to be consequences and repercussions. Mm. All right? Okay? <laughs> all right? Shout out to Rory, though. Congratulations, man. Absolutely. You know Beautiful thing. Oh, Listen, Mary, it's a beautiful thing. Congratulations, man. Yo, I wanted to um, <laughs> just, I want to say to everybody, because a lot of people have been tweeting me about uh, saying that uh, Ray Romano just released a new special on Netflix that he he stole my special. Uh, What's the name of Ray Romano's special? Uh, is, I forget the name of it. Maybe it's called Unannounced. But basically what he does is he does a uh, thing where he pops up at a couple comedy clubs in New York City. And, uh, you know, a couple of clubs that I went to and he goes one and around the corner, kind of unannounced and just pops in. And they're like, yo, this is just like 441 where I, where I did it. And first of all, I don't think that anybody's copying my shit. I don't think they're like, let's go. He's exactly. But what I do think it is, is a sign of and I've seen this happen quite a lot is like just me being in the comedy ecosystem. You know, like I've noticed these things start to happen. Right. Like 
once once you get in it, I'm sure you've seen this with your career. Like once you say certain things, they start to reverberate within yeah. the world that you're in. So like just putting out four four one, we put out a 15 minute special. Then Netflix put us out 15 minute specials. You know, I do this thing where I'm traveling, doing all these shows, and doing the cab rides in between. Then Comedy Central copies it exactly, and they do this thing called Thank You Good Night, where they literally just copy the exact same thing I did. Then Ray is doing this thing where they're bouncing around. I do this travel show called Dropping In where I went to like Boston, really looked at a comedy scene and I pitched that I was going to do it all around the world and now Netflix is going to do this comedy show where they travel around the world to see comedy around the world. And it's just like, I'm not saying that they're looking at me directly and they're going, hey, this is exactly, you know, we'll just take every idea from this kid, whatever. But it's without a doubt that I'm doing things first put it that way and then people are being influenced in the and i'm affecting the comedy ecosystem so what number one i just want to say thank y'all for holding me down and saying hey we saw you do this first this that the other and number two just know that we're in a good space because as long as we're leading the charge then they got to play catch up with Absolutely. us so and, I'm in a, and, and eventually it'll be one thing that you do that they can't duplicate Oh, none of that they duplicate successfully, but absolutely, they're just going to need it. Um, but it's just, I'm just so excited for March 3rd because when I drop this new one, Views from the Sis, it's going to really, I think the effects of comedy it's, it's going to have on the comedy world is going to be major. Talk that talk show, T. Major, man, because it's going to shift it back. Like, I've noticed the things that I've put out there in the world at least within comedy, even the way that I look at social media and comedy, you know, like putting my bits out. Now I see all the comics starting to do it. And you should, because mm -hmm. I do this for all of us. Like when I see other comics, you know, following the blueprint, I want you to do that. I want you to win because the game has been changed now. Now we're not competing for eight comedy specials a year on Comedy Central. Now we all have the internet. We're not competing with anything. We're just putting out content and the people who love it and fuck with it are going to find it. So... I want you guys to do, and I want, you know, comics as far as you guys, I want you to keep improving and share that those new improvements with everybody so we can win. Um, I think it's just, yeah, it's just a very good space that we're in. And then March 3rd through the 30th, we're going to see a shift. We're going to see a shift back to the good old days of comedy, the comedy that was unapologetic, the comedy that was before the Me Too. offensive, before and all Me three and Me four and Me five, before all that shit, the comedy that we grew up with, we love the comedy that pushed boundaries. This is going to be the transition because the networks always follow what's hot. They're at a race to be second. They'll get behind anything if it's profitable. They don't give a fuck. True. Right? So it just you just need to show them that it works first. And now I finally got the bandwidth where I could show these things work. And yeah, you're gonna see. It's, oh, I'm so excited. I'm I don't so think excited. the network's I'm fucking watching. with that raw shit, B. You're gonna see. Not as long as it sponsors. You're gonna see. You, you might... just need to prove that people watch it. Like, you could say that they don't wanna fuck with the raw shit, but then you look at places like Barstool who are, say, wild shit. Their concert is super wild, and then the sponsors support it, right? What's Barstool on? Barstool is their own entity. Online, right? Yeah, they're an online sports portal yeah. that's got just as much influence Nobody wants this or heat more. from this, bro. Say what? People scared of this heat from this, bro. You're going to see. You're gonna I, think, see. I think it'll do, I think you, it'll work well for you. You're going to see. It's going to shift comedy. You'll see. It just, the, the networks are so afraid, right? Because they're beholden to that. You're, you're picking up your phone, which is Twitter and all that kind of stuff. But the reason I've been putting out these shows in the ecosystem, like the Inside Joke Show, the whole idea about that show is when we're working on offensive jokes with other comics, mm -hmm. the whole idea is to show the process of comedy. You can't just tell people, like comics, we do this all the time. We're comics. This is what we do. Let us do it. Don't tell them. Show them how you work on a joke. You're showing them how the food is being Show cooked. them how the food is being cooked. And then they start to understand how that works. And now you're not as upset at a joke because you know the process that's going behind it. Right? You know the, you know what we're doing to set it up. So once they see this and they see the effect and they see how people, when they watch this stuff, you watch in the privacy of your own homes. Mm -hmm. Ain't no being offended in the privacy of your own You decide to click on a video. And when they see people are like, oh shit, this is the comedy we love and enjoy. They're gonna they're gonna try to play catch up with us. That's why I think the streaming services are so great. And that's why I think online is so great. There's just so many other platforms. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't know. I just think TV's scared to take risk. Well, TV's dead. Not I, there's just TV, thing. radio too. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. It, Especially for an artist like me. But yo, but here's the thing: is because you got to start somewhere though. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not saying don't start. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, saying. Yeah. But do it where you do it. Like, so here's the thing that I realized with like TV execs: some there are some talented execs, but not a lot because they never had to be talented, right? Like mm -hmm. the way TV worked and networks worked, it was no different than like basketball teams or football teams. There was a finite amount 
of teams. There were 29 teams, right? Mm -hmm. With TV, there was 30 channels. Now, you had a choice back in the day. You could either watch TV or look at your wall. So, of course, we're going to watch TV because mm -hmm. it's less boring than looking at the wall. That didn't mean that the TV was good. Right. Now. That's the gospel truth right there. Right there. So, now, all of a sudden, the internet explodes and there's a million teams. And some of those teams are making amazing content. Like this show that that people are watching right now on YouTube in their home is more is more fun, more interesting, more enjoyable than ninety percent of television yeah, out there. You know what? If I'm a real creative, the last thing I want to do is go to a network and have them tell me they love me, but I, they want to change everything about the motherfucking show. Exactly. So right. what's the point? And people who battle already, my battle, boom. So people they, and these people aren't even elite at creating. Like you and I, we're on the ground level. Not you, but like we're on the ground level of creation, right? You've been there as well. Mm -hmm. But like we literally have. No, there's times where no financial backing, no nothing. We, all we have is a dope idea, and people are gravitating to the idea. And we're beating out networks that got millions of dollars to produce shit. Think about that. That's they don't know how to create because they don't have. Elite they know talent. how to promote. They know how to market. You know what I'm saying? But they don't know how to create. They always That's know, it. What's the creative? What's the creative? What's the creative? They're the Atlanta Hawks. Nobody went to those games. when Back when And One was popping, them shits were full. That's what we are. We're fledgling league. You know what I mean? But we've got the content. We've got the interest. We got people hyped. And now they're frightened to compete with us. I think that everybody should create like they're at the level they want to be at. Facts. Meaning, if you want to make movies, then create like you're making movies now. If you want to create television, create like you're doing television now. If you want to sell out arenas and never create, you do your comedy like you're selling out arenas now. Like you don't wait. wait. You know what I'm saying? Like because everybody will catch up later. And the by the way, you be. it's not about anything nowadays. Except it, first of all, it's always been just about the people, but it's really just about the people now. Because mm -hmm. one thing you can't do is fool motherfuckers, mm -hmm. and every network alive is realizing that. So you can go grab whoever the fuck you want and put them on TV. If the people ain't fucking with them, they ain't fucking with them. You can, go whoever, you can go grab whoever you want and put them in these movies. Mm -hmm. If the people ain't fucking with them, the people ain't fucking with them. And, I know, yep. I know people right now that got TV shows, they got films, but they ain't hot as little Duval. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. They just not like it's, it's just not gonna happen. You know why somebody like Cardi connects? Because Cardi got the fucking people. That's it. People and, fuck and with Cardi. Back in the day, the 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 network meant something. Like having an HBO special meant something. It was programming. You could fool people. You could fool people because we put so much equity in HBO. We're like HBO produced this. It, it must, must be, be good, team, yeah. right? Back in the day, even MTV, MTV, it must be good. Now the network brand is at an all time low of value. All we care about is people and content. We're like, oh, Cardi B got a song? Well, I love her when she's on Instagram. I'll check out her song because she connected with the people. And that's that's a space that I love operating in because even when it came to like when I did shows on television, the networks were always so-so on me, but then they would test the show amongst people and the test would come back wild. They'd be like, oh, the people love this kid. You got to green light the show. That's how all my shows got green light. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'll gamble on the people any day. I'm not going to gamble on on somebody who I don't think really understands content, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like the game is fucking changing and the power is being brought back to us. And I'm just trying to put a blueprint out there for comics on how you can essentially empower yourself. How could you can use your own content, the shit that you love creating to get fans and access people, right? And really take control of your career. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's happening right now. That's why it's fucking exciting. And I think March 3rd, baby. March 3rd, we're going to change March the game 3rd. again. We're going to change it again. Cadillac, give me your uh, Twitters and Instagrams and all that good stuff. Okay, on Twitter, I'm at Caddy Kim, C-A-D-D-Y-K-I-M. And uh, on Instagram, I'm uh, Auntie Cadillac, at A-U-N-T-E-A, -E Cadillac, C-A-D-I-L-L-A-C, Auntie Cadillac, on Instagram. And then I'm just regular old Kimberly Freeman, Cadillac Kimberly on Facebook. Word. Mm -hmm. Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you're absolutely right. If you listen to the podcast and you think we're, hold on, what the fuck? I forgot. I literally looked up and thought about Taylor not having a date tomorrow for Valentine's and got distracted <laughs> as fuck. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. So since I don't have a date, you want to tell these um, your listeners to give me more followers in?
Oh, shit. You know the mic's still on, right? Oh, shit. Really? So, so you all that front. Date, first of all, first of all, tell me, tell me, no, 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 don't try to swish it up now. You heard her say, since I don't have a date. But as soon as you think the mic's back on, no, she got a date. earlier. What's your date's name? I'm not telling you that. What's his last name? Sif. Not either. Nope. Not getting nothing. Just know I have one. I'll give you an Instagram picture to show that. I'm Can I be honest with you? What? Michaela got a date. Okay. <laughs> 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 Michaela got a date. No, it's not me. She was busy. She says she's busy. <laughs> you know her date? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope you guys both have a good, good balance. <laughs> what do you? <laughs> Anyways. Are we done? Um, I have a question Yo, for Andrew, guys. ignore her. You're right. You're Today's right. Valentine's Day. Do what every other guy's doing. Uh, <laughs> All right? <laughs> 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 <laughs>